while I was at my parents' house, they they often uh, you know they keep clippings of things. You know, if if we've been mentioned in the papers, I don't know if you've heard this, Carl. In the Sunday Times, they uh, someone's written a letter about Carl. Wow. Uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent. And this is what it, someone wrote to the uh, Sunday Times. Who is Carl Pilkington? And why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? He asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. That's from Wendy in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. Do you know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, then you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> but think how angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times. Well, that's good. I mean, though. you it's really must some... have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah. If I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listened to this. But... Almost certainly not. <laughs> well, listen, right. <laughs> I was saying about the the uh, museums, right, and how they're big and everything, and they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. mm. that in the, in that museum, they've got something like uh, seven million bits of stuff in there, <laughs> right? Now, when I spend two hours in somewhere, just show me the good stuff. Don't be saying we've got seven million bits, because there was a fella who a fella who opened it. Right, I did a bit of research on the museum. What museum was it? It was the London one. Oh, the London one, yeah. yeah. So he's in there and he's, he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? Just whatever's knocking about that oh, time. Okay. It, just, it seemed like you he, never, researched it. he never chucked anything away. So oh. Like, oh, I won't put it in the bin, pop it on the shelf. Oh, right? okay, so yeah. So he's put everything on a shelf oh, in right, this museum. Yeah. Then as time well, I think you're on, going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is uh, he keeps everything. And if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing the good stuff well people who set these museums up are just as crafty <laughs> what the fellow who found suit and carmen he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets <laughs> the that had rings on them and stuff so all i'm saying is why is she having a go but, hang on, wait, no, but we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself and you just confirmed wendy's point a thousand times over what was all this waffle about people nicking stuff what's that got to do with anything because she's having a go at me, I didn't nick But anything. she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's not nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, all right, then well, we'll watch Wendy's little programme when that goes out. Let's see what she's got to talk about. Sick of her. This is why Wendy's having a go, though, because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about... But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit... Who'd have thought the Frisbee would have caught on? I love the fact that you think the Frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that, you know, if he was on some programme where, you you know, you said, I've invented this, did go, get out. They wouldn't, have, they wouldn't give him time of day to say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about. What, what for? When you just chuck it out on the beach. What's the point? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? No, I don't like it. How okay, many that was an argument with himself. <laughs> No, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing, and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the Frisbee, and that's saying something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup, and it's a, it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. What's a clippable mat? What a does clippable that mat that you stick on a cup, so you, you can put your cup down on a table without having to go, oh, where's that mat? It's, it's clipped to the cup all the time, and you put the cup down wherever you want because it's got a mat on it. I think I've seen that. But why does it have no, to be haven't. clipped? No, why couldn't it just be built into the cup? Because, uh So it clips onto... You've got to have special cups. It doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce. It doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the sauce of that... I mean, I don't use sauces. <laughs> just don't buy... That sort but isn't of a sauce of what you're talking about? Uh kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. See, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no-one's picked up on his ideas, like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, what's the one about the tie? 
Um, the tie that had a pocket. <laughs> loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that. That's something I, I saw somewhere. It never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet. It's such a good... It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a carrier idea. bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie packed with stuff. You want to... Imagine All right, Frank, stuff. nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um, <laughs> this ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck. What for? Um... Well, I'll tell you. What? Uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Well, all right then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. Now, I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie around your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? Pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, that's weird. What are you that's all right. I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but, but, hang on, hang on a minute. It's a hot day, innit? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. <laughs> well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing at home. a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. A tie at the moment is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're going to be hot, carry something. Hands free. And everything's always there. A bag, put stuff in a bag, you put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags, that's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off. Oh, where's the bag? A tie, when you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. Carl! The country would look smarter. Right, you have pockets, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got spare change. Yeah, okay. Which, uh... You're rattling around like a like a cow in Switzerland, right. just like... I've got spare change, I've got, uh, like, my debit card in there. Right. Uh, maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. Okay. Uh, a pair of scissors, if you want. Amazing. <laughs> that's whatever. safe, isn't it? Oh, that's, that's a good it. place to put it, just around the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and the, near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards, brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. So when you when you're on the beach and you just got your speedos on, pop a tie on. Go to the shop, do pop a tie on. Well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times. But I'm just saying, if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's all right. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie, you've got clothes with pockets. And it's going to be weighing your neck down. If I mean, come on, don't go mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. <laughs> <laughs> Carl said the, uh, the most exciting words. He said, I've had another film idea. Wow. Does it star Clive Warren? Sell it to me like you, I'm a Hollywood executive. Sell me the film. So what I was thinking is, um, I'm picturing probably, it doesn't matter, it's not as fixed, it doesn't have to be this person, but I'm thinking Tom Cruise. OK, Cruisey, yeah. Excellent. Um, and the way it works is... Do you know Tom, by the way, or have you got an in there, or...? No. no OK, but you just... No, you, I, you, I think you it's the sort it. of film that, would that he'd, to Tom. he'd sort of be into. I think it would okay. excite him. OK, great, OK. Um, so... Have you, you ordered coffees? Did, did, um... What? Did Cheryl get you a coffee? Yeah. Oh, OK, thanks, great. So, Are you hungry at all? Do you want to...? No. No? Great. So, uh... Cheryl, I might have a tea, actually. Cheryl, if you could... Well, we'll wait for the teas before she comes in. She'll, she'll, she'll just sneak in. Flowing. She'll be... She will be very quiet. She'll be like a doormat. She won't even know she's coming. Okay. You just... Okay. You've got your coffee. Okay. I don't want any tea. Yeah, you don't want anything. No, no, I'm fine, okay. thanks. Go. Uh, actually, uh, I will have a tea, actually, Cheryl. Uh, two teas, Cheryl. Thanks. Okay, go. Right. Thanks, Cheryl. <laughs> Thanks. Is there sugar? The Sorry, is there sugar in this shell? Oh, yeah. Shut the door behind you. Thank you. Okay, go all the way. Go. Tom Cruise. I got Tom Cruise. That's what I've pictured so far. He he's just on Mission Impossible Seven. Right. Uh, in this film. Oh, in the film. So he's playing himself. No, what you've seen on the screen is Mission Impossible Seven. So if you get Cruise, he is he is playing himself. Yeah. And he's just made and, he's, that. and in this film, he's just made Mission Impossible 7. It's the future, is it? This... No, what you're seeing... Is it, OK, what's this film called? I haven't got a title yet. We'll just call it Carl Pilkington Project 2. Right. OK. Can so, you, you go in. The opening thing is Mission Impossible 7. You think I've seen it? I thought it was just KP2. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah. Right, listen. So, so what happens is then it, it sort of pans out. You yeah. see it's a telly. Ah. There's a bloke watching... Mission Impossible 7. 7. Right. His girlfriend's watching it going, oh, I love Tom Cruise. Yeah. He's there going, I can't be dealing with him. 
It's so it is set in the future, though, this, because we're assuming that he's made seven, so this is a... Yeah. How far in the future is it? Well, when will Mission Impossible 7 be made? I don't know. Probably about two years, the way it's going. Right, so, yeah, 2013. Let's not get bogged down in all... A lot of these things okay. we can iron out, mm. as I say, in the script. So you see listen. Mission Impossible Cheryl, 7 on the screen. are any of those biscuits still knocking around? Do you want to do this meeting? <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry he's a bit Sorry. E easily distracted. Sorry. But I will have a biscuit as well, Cheryl. <laughs> um, so, OK, I've been watching the film. I've, it's Mission Impossible 7. It's pulled out. There's a guy in his room in his lounge. His girlfriend's with his girlfriend. watching it. She's yes. loving it. She's a fan she of Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Right. right. He's a little bit niggled. He wanted to watch something else. Sure. She decided on the DVD. Mm -hmm. He sat there annoyed. I can't be dealing with Tom Cruise. I can't believe they've made seven of these films. Right. He's a rubbish actor. I right. should be the actor. You know, ah. I've been doing acting for years. But he's not an actor. He's well, he is. Okay. But he hasn't quite made it. He's sending a lot of demos off. Right. Forget so that. he's a he's a struggling actor. Hmm. So what happens is next day they get up. Right. Yeah. She's still going on about Tom Cruise. Loves him. Doing some sick of him. Right, she loves him. Got my biscuits gone in my tea. I left it in there too long because he put me off. Just just hang on, let me just think. Twat. Can I get the spoon, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Biscuit. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's all gone. It's all soggy. Mm, oh, soggy. Sure, can we get some more of those biscuits in here, please? Do you want, do you want to weigh more? Or? Yeah, I'd love to yeah, hear no, more, please. Yeah, 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 I'm just yeah, conscious please. that Colin Firth's coming in. He's won an Oscar, so... So, um, what happens is he gets so annoyed with his girlfriend liking Tom Cruise. Mm. He, um... He plans to kill him. So uh, he sees Tom Cruise. He kills him somehow. Now it's some way. Right? How does he kill him? Oh Would yeah, you... yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's okay. right. Oh, I got... So okay, right. he dies in the film in Mission Impossible Seven. They're doing right. that thing on the strings. Right. He cuts. He lands. Right. His body is in perfect condition. So but it's, how but is she watching the film? the film? Yeah. Did they put it out even after Tom Cruise? No, died? no. Sorry. He was filming Mission Impossible Eight. So he's okay. So he's they, filming the next they, one. They film the next one. Mission Impossible Eight. Okay, sure. He's, he's annoyed. He's going. I can't believe they're making more of these films. Right. I can't get a gig, and yeah. you're churning this crap out. Yeah. Okay. So he's on his springs. On his wires, yeah. On his wires. Yeah. An accident happens. Springs happened. sounds better. <laughs> he's bouncing around. <laughs> like a baby grows. <laughs> yeah. 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 His strings cut, smash. <laughs> Tom Cruise dead. Right. 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 The bloke hears this on the radio, on the news. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the girlfriend's fella. He hears it on the news. He can't believe it. He's like, yeah. Ooh. Takes his eye off the road a little bit in the celebration. Mm. <laughs> Truck. Plows into the car. Right? So he's killed as well. Well, is he? Okay. Oh, okay. Little interlude. Fades up. Um, comes out of. You're seeing it out of his eyes. You see his eyes sort of opening. You know when you're seeing yeah, out yeah, the eyes. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah, the yeah, eyelids. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see his girlfriend there, sort of looking at him like a bit, bit startled. Oh, sure. Yeah. And he's going, oh, what happened? And she's going, it's all right, it's all right. And he's going, oh, get me a mirror. She's going, I don't want to get you a mirror yet. OK. Oh, hold on, what's going on? You've, you've had a bad accident. What's he going to look like? All mirrors out of the room and everything. He's just learning to, yeah. learning to walk. He's going, why can't I look in a mirror? And the doctor's going, yeah. no point. Yeah. Right, okay. No point. You've got to get used to this body. Then he gets walking. It's yep. almost time to go home. Yep. His girlfriend comes in. Yep. It's her job. To tell him the, the, the new news. Oh the my shocking God, what news. is the news? Um, she says, There's a mirror looking there. He looks in it. Yeah. He's Tom Cruise. Right. right. Because he had his accident on the set. He yeah. had the accident. He ended up in the hospital. Right. Right. Quick, quick, we've got to act quick. This is the time, this is the future right. where they use, where they can use bodies. bodies, all the rest of it. So Tom Cruise is dead. Tom Cruise dead. This but bloke, he's, Brian. He's body. He's, 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 his body's squashed, but. What's his name, Brian? Yeah. But Brian's brain is in Tom Cruise's body. Just a donor body. He just happens to. Just look... happened to. That's how yeah, it is. It's just, just, just meat. It's just, just like, top... like a lung donor, exactly. heart donor. Yeah. It's so, just so is his Brian. Uh, he just looks like Tom Cruise now. He's got Tom Cruise's flesh. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Now, at first, initially, he's annoyed. Sorry, just practically, who is doing the voiceover then for the. It's Tom now. So he's Tom's acting. sort of doing an impression of the, this actor. Brian. Brian's inside Tom. His yeah. name is Brian, but when you look at it on the telly, when the camera whizzes round, yeah. and you see him sat in his bed, it's Tom Cruise. Sure. Right, okay. His girlfriend's over the moon, because she loves Tom Cruise. Right. right. He's gutted because he couldn't stand him, he can't stand the films. He's thinking, Yeah, oh. but he must be thinking, I look like Tom Cruise, one of the most loved actors of his generation. Yeah. No, it, he'd also think so, but he's not, because he's in shock, remember? Right. He was expecting to see himself, and when he looks in the mirror, yeah, he sees no, someone else. Yeah, that must be else. shocking, yeah. 
So What's the voice is he's going, I can't stand this. And she's going, calm down, calm down, you'll get used to it. And I don't want to get used to it. And uh, she's sort of saying, look, you're alive. Right. Stop moaning. Yeah. Brian. Stop moaning, Brian. Um, she's calling him Brian, I assume. She says... And yeah. Tom Cruise just had a sort of donor card that allowed his body to be given away, did it? Yeah, it's the future. Right. This is, this is, this is 2013, Steve. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> Clearly. Right. But What's his girlfriend's name? Claire. Claire, Claire and Brian, okay, great, just a different body, just a slightly different look. All just right, like, so, yeah. right. he's seen that he looks like Tom Cruise, he's shocked, but he's getting used to it. He doesn't look like him, he is him. When he leaves the hospital... Oh, no, right, Tom, I thought you were there. They're all going, it's Tom, it's Tom, and he's going, really? oh, yeah, and he's going, oh, I knew this would happen, it's doing me head in. So he wheels out, he's in the wheelchair, Okay. he's going, I'm sick of this. Uh, the other patients are going, Tom, I thought you were dead, and he's yeah, going, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's annoyed, he gets in the car. He gets out there, right. and he sees a poster up on the side of the road right. for Mission Impossible 8. It's, I don't know. It's finished. I thought he died while they were filming It's not it. finished. But now, these days, he's shouting about films before the name. <laughs> and they're wow. getting brilliant and all the hype well, they and everything. Up, even that after... seems premature. No, the poster yeah. was already up. That seems premature, up. given that no, a man coming... died during the production. It doesn't yeah. matter. I no. put, I've taken the posters down, no, but then like... I don't work in Hollywood. <laughs> right. So the poster's up there, and he sees it as he's yeah. in the car driving past. Yeah. And he thinks, that can't, that can't be finished. Doesn't make sense, yeah. They both look at each other. This is your chance. You want it to be an actor. This is the chance. Yeah. Right. Go back to the studio. So he goes in. Hello. You don't know me. And they go, oh, we think we do. And they go, no, you don't. I'm Brian. Tom right. died on your film set. Well, they, they must zoom. know that. They must know <laughs> that, that Tom Cruise, Cruise died. is dead. <laughs> Because his family must have been... All right, if, if you want to, it makes no difference. We can tweak the script. So this is... Brian has turned up looking like Tom Cruise. He said to the film company, right, who must know that Tom Cruise died on their film set, what were they going to do? Were they they would have had to wrap it up. They would have well, had no, to what? say... You said they put the, the posters are up. <laughs> yes, the posters are up before they've even finished So they're cancelling the film until he walks Basically, in? Basically, yeah. Oh, so they are cancelling the film? They're cancelling it. OK, so uh, we're afraid that... Um, uh, production has stopped on Mr. Bustle uh, 8 due to the death of Tom Cruise. Hang it's on a stopped. minute. What? I'm Brian. Who the, who's Brian? Oh my god, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. Oh, they've done that thing where they put Brian's brain in Tom Cruise's body? Yeah. Ah, oh, but it's not Tom Cruise, you can't act like him. I'm an, I'm an actor. Yeah, but oh, he was good because he was like one yeah, of the best actors. He's not that good. I never rated him. Yeah, but a lot of it did. And he's yeah, got a lot of people didn't. So right. let me bring in a new audience for you, eh? I but can bring can a bit to this. Right. So this, of course, gives it a boost because... Right. Um, well, the flagging see, franchise has been rejuvenated. The, the yeah. press, the news that's yeah. out there. Yeah. Tom Cruise and his new film. Well, it's not Tom Cruise. They can't say that. Well, it is, though. When you look at him, you go, oh, it's Tom Cruise. Well, no, you've got to say a bloke that looks like Tom Cruise. The body of Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah. The acting of his skill Mission Impossible 8, starring bones and skin and stuff of Tom Cruise with Brian's brain. Oh, forget do it. You like the, you like, <laughs> do you like Tom Cruise's face, but not his acting? <laughs> then you'll enjoy Mission Impossible 8. Oh, uh, oh, Mission Impossible 8. From the people who bought you the first seven, <laughs> and the hair of the bloke who was in the first seven, but with Brian. It's some kind I've never heard of on, on the seventh sequel. No, wait, sorry, I really want to hear the ending of this story movie. Please let right. me ask questions. You've had, you had your chance to ask him questions. <sighs> Right. So where are we? In a sort of 90-minute running time of a movie, where are we now in the film? Are we about two-thirds of the way through? We're close, we're close to the end. OK. So Mission Impossible 8 has been made. So what's the end of our movie? Not of Mission Impossible 8, but the movie you're making. What's hmm. the ending there? Um, Do we ever get to see him in Mission Impossible I think, 8? Yeah, but I think what happens is mm. um, he becomes the person who he never liked. Right. And it's, it's, I just want to get across the moral that, who are we? Are we the people in our body or the people we look like? Mm. What's important in life? Mm. Is it the way you look or the way you think? And he, he changes because he looks like Tom Cruise, he becomes the man he never liked. Oh, and what's his girlfriend think of this? Who's? Brian's. She's loving it, isn't she? Because it's, it's, she always liked Tom Cruise. She's What did Brian moon. look like? Who would play him in this film? 
Probably. Pro um, what's his name? The bloke who was in Cheers, probably. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. So Ted Danson <laughs> is Brian. So Claire, <laughs> right. So this is so confusing <laughs> because Ted Danson's supposed to be someone that we've never heard of, even though he's Ted Danson. And Tom Cruise is playing himself, the famous actor Tom Cruise. <laughs> Who is now inhabited Ted by Ted Danson, who's Ted not Danson. Ted Danson. <laughs> Ted Danson! Ted Danson as Brian. <laughs> Ted Danson as Brian, as Tom Cruise, as <laughs> Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible 8. <laughs> wow. Who's played Claire? Uh, I th well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for you, you know, that's why I've come to you, I thought you'd... There's an obvious suggestion, okay, so, Rebecca okay. De Mornay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> she is so hot after the love of a brain or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna go where everybody knows your name is Brian. <laughs> Red Nose Day, Comic Relief has come round again. Yeah, um, Red Nose Day is obviously the very specific date in the calendar for the whole generic term comic relief, I think. It's normally it? when the uh, telecast happens. Yeah. Um, people know that that's the day when they can uh, dress up, do charitable acts. But, of course, Comic Relief is a charity that's working all the time for uh, disenfranchised all over the world. Are you, have you always been a, a strong champion of Comic Relief, Kyle? Not really. Um, Why was I expecting that answer? Well, I do loads of stuff without going on about it. My gift to the world has been you, Carl, to be quite honest. I feel that you're the world. I'm now. sure there's people in Africa going, we, we prefer blankets. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a, a Wills charity, isn't it? Is it? Sort of. I mean, no, if, you, if, you make half, if you make a donation to a charity within the will, I suppose that's quite charitable. But Do just you giving money to your relatives isn't, is it? Of course it is. <laughs> well, they it shouldn't is. Have it. They're getting some up for nothing, but it's... I, mean, I don't know. It's giving something away that you have no use for. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, mean, but, but forget that. It's someone is getting something yeah. when they've done nothing for it, really. Well, it is. It, I suppose it is charity, but charity is usually infused with some sort of altruism. It's, it, it's like, it's not charity on your part because you're literally not around anymore. So it's no longer you giving it, it's just some money that Yeah, but I could, I could either was. give it them or not give it them. Once I'm dead and I've turned to mush, I shouldn't be worrying about <laughs> Suzanne's mum getting a table. <laughs> but, is that, is but that you what know, you're leaving her? Well, I've, I've called up my dad first. Why are you doing a will for the because show? Because of this travel thing right, I'm yeah. doing, and it can get dangerous, you know. But I've, why have you done a will up to now? Because you sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt sort of young and free. <laughs> Whereas now I'm I've never that's never two words I've associated with Carl. <laughs> no. He's always seemed like a man who's in his late fifties. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Never, the idea that you're free. It's it, more... it, even if we're just talking about the head alone, it's <laughs> it's the it's the head of a late fifties. Free of hair. Yeah, <laughs> totally free of fucking hair. I'm sort of getting on first name terms with my doctor. Oh mm. really? Chatting more. Oh what is it this time? How's your yeah. middle finger? You Not know. too bad, Carl. All, all that sort of thing. So it's just made me think. Have you had that done for the will, by the way, for insurance? I think and you stuff? need to, don't you, for a will? I think you do. There's nothing the on prostate the prostate exam. No. no uh, listen, for insurance purposes, I think you need to have um, a testicular exam for testicular cancer. You're just leaving the high risk for testicular cancer, actually, and you're you're entering the high risk. For prostate and cancer. And you can have both at the same time. You could have both the at, the same time. at the same time. If he's a very dexterous doctor. Um, I wouldn't want that. Why? Too much like... It's just too, too much playful. going on. It's like someone juggling you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like being examined by Squidly Diddly. And so you said you called up your dad. Called him up. I said, is there anything you want if, <laughs> in, if, I, if I die? Right. And presumably, you know, Suzanne, she's getting the, she's getting the lion's share. She is. But then the fellow who was on the end of the phone talking us through it all was going, oh, you should get married. I was going, oh, shut up. He's saying, well, it make it things a lot easier when it comes to this. And it's like, well, that isn't a reason to get married, is it? <laughs> well. So she can have all my stuff. I said, I've wrote on a bit of paper that she mm. can have it. But it's something about um, tax. If you're not married, you have to hand over more. I think you get so much and then it's like ridiculous tax rate. Yeah. But she's going, you should, that's why we should get married. I'm going to be paying tax. I'm going, hang on a minute. She's already, like, thinking about money loss <laughs> instead of me b disappearing. Yeah. She's going, yeah, we should. And I'm saying, look, you'll be getting a load of money. I said, if I die on this programme anyway, mm. I'm insured. You'll yeah. be getting about a million pounds for that. Yeah. I said, so that's, that's something you haven't got now. 
Yeah. Got nowhere near that now. I said, so even if you have to pay tax on that, yeah. I, I don't think it'd be right to get married just in case I get killed. Have you, your two sets of parents met? No. That'd be good, would it? Well, I suppose it's the reason to, isn't it? At least if you're getting married, there's a reason for them to meet. At the moment, there's no reason for them to meet. No. They'd get on each other's nerves. My dad wouldn't get on with a man. Why? Just wouldn't. She doesn't like me, so she won't like me dad. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's just an exaggerated version. <laughs> so, I think uh, it doesn't need to happen. But you could just nip down the registry office, get it done, done and dusted, and you just phone up your folks and say, it's already happened. It's I said late. that. I said, listen, if we had to do it, I said if, if it was like we'd got to do it for some reason, mm. I said I'd do that. You, we can have it done by two, you can be back in work for three. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, there's no other, there's no, you know, we've known each other for years. Yeah. We're not going to suddenly turn into some sort of Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan film mm. just because we got married. Yeah. It's going to be the same, yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Jane were out with him and Suzanne the other night, right, at, at dinner. And honestly, he is so, so grumpy. He was saying about uh, uh, for Christmas, right? He said, You've had a flaw. <laughs> You've had a flaw. <laughs> Now, what did that mean? We had a new floor put in. But how is that her floor? Because she wanted it. But you walk on it too. I paid for it. I don't understand what but you mean. But don't you understand that, like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a romantic break or a, or <laughs> clothes or perfumes, you know, sort of things that are kind of indulgent for a lady, that's, that's a gift, not yeah. a new floor. That is like something that you give to some little African fella on Comic Relief. In fact, I think I saw it once. He yeah. didn't have a floor. <laughs> exactly. They built him a floor. I, I remember watching it with you, and they gave him a new pair of shoes and the floor. He went, hold on, floor or shoes, not both. <laughs> so you think charity is all right as long as people don't get above their station with charity? I think it should be there as a little, little booster. Right. They've always got their hand out. Right. And it's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I remember being a kid, people mm. knocking on the door, my mum going, don't look at the door, there's someone there. <laughs> <laughs> and we just pretend they were Charity there. starts at home, not at your home. <laughs> no, but because it's all the time. I mean, my mum didn't like answering the door anyway, even if it was the pools man, she'd sort of say, don't move, and he might not see that we're here. So you just froze where a man was at the door. Well, you just, because the front room was near the door, so people right. could see in. Right. So you just sort of stayed there and pretend that either well, you can't so like some sort of predator, like... They can't see if you don't move. Well, even if he was peering in through the window and he could see you in there not moving. So he looked through and there was three people just frozen, <laughs> like, right, like statues, right, just their eyes looking at him yeah. and well, him confused. Well, not... they're clearly dead, I'll move on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's obviously been a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you say sitting or stand up, or no. did you sort of like throw yourself? No, we just, we just sat. We just sat on on the you know where you were, and you just stayed still. But did he ever look in and see? I you don't know. You didn't turn around, did you? <laughs> so you would pretend you couldn't hear the door. It seemed to be the eighties. Had a lot of it because it was yeah. all the Avon thing. When it? it was perfume, yeah. Yeah. Tupperware. What? Tupperware. Tupperware. Yeah, the plastic yeah. boxes. <laughs> Tupperware. Tupperware. It's, tu it's dishes for fat people. Uh, here we go. Oh, uh, these are big, aren't they? Are they're for fat fuckers like you to eat out of? Just a lot of charity stuff. It, just a lot. It seemed to be the time, the eighties, that they suddenly found out they can sort of scav money off people. Okay, right. Let's do the scenario. I'm, I'm at the door. Uh, I can, I can see you in there. Might as well come open the door. Carl? Carl? Why are you staying so still? Are you, are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> it's working. Carl, your eyes are moving. <laughs> Can you come to the door, please? <laughs> I suppose in the end you've got to move Carl, on. Um, no, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> I'm just going to stay here until you have to move. Carl! <laughs> <laughs> OK, and I'll move on then. Right. It works. <laughs> yeah, it works okay. perfectly. Because Brilliant. once they've got you, that's the whole thing with charity, once they've stopped you in the street, if you've stopped, that's it. Keeps on going. You know, I mean, the good thing now is you've got an iPod. 
So you can just either pretend you're on the phone mm. or listen to music. Or just stay very still. <laughs> just freeze when someone says, Can I trouble you for. Oh, he's totally frozen. That would be amazing because they're normally in one spot, aren't they? Yeah. So it's just so they're carrying so on they selling. Stop you, and, and so you've got to stay there for the rest of it outside waitress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for seven yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, it goes dark. <laughs> well, I'm. Um, I've finished my shift, I'm off. And then you just see, you, your eyes just see them walk away like that and they all meet in their little tunics. And then you start walk. they look back and you freeze. And then they walk on. And then you can go home seven hours late. Ever since I was young, I've always liked going in charity shops, particularly because, you know, you can you find sort of interesting old records in there. Never sort of gone in there to buy clothes and stuff, but, you know, books, whatever. And, uh... I was in a charity shop, you know, and I've patronised patronized them for years, and I noticed out through the window there was like a paparazzi guy, and he was taking pictures of me through the window. That was a bit weird. And obviously the old ladies in there didn't have any idea who I was, so they just thought that was a bit strange. And then it was in one of the, uh, the magazines, like the kind of celebrity magazines. It was, oh, here's Steve Merchant. You know, he, despite all the money he must have made from his various projects, he's still going in charity shops. And you just think, but so I, how is that a bad thing? I, I'm yeah, sure. I give a lot of stuff to charity. A lot. Most of the time, just because it's, it's nearer than the wheelie bin is. It's just a way of getting rid of garbage most sure. of the time with me. Stick it all in a bin bag, good stuff on the top, the stuff that you're embarrassed about, yeah. stick it in the bottom of the bag. What are you embarrassed in, about? Just old shoes, trainers. Some of the books you've written. Uh, socks, socks, underpants. Underpants? You do not give underpants to charity. Washed. But who's gonna... <laughs> Wash, I know, as opposed to just like peeling them off. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so, I don't know why you've got a problem with underpants, but shoes. You see, I've never buy underpants from a charity yeah. shop. Though. I mean, I don't care how low you are on the socio-economic level. I know. You can get about fourteen pairs for a quid in some places. I know. I don't know who's buying underpants. <laughs> I don't know who's buying your underpants. <laughs> I definitely don't. Know. I mean, if they were signed. Yeah. That, that is something. That is something I like doing though. When I've given to charity, mm. I like going past the shop and seeing if it made it in the window. Mm. Any success? Yeah, re recently, the one not far from here had me um, egg cups in the window. So it's like, oh, look. That's, that's what, you've right. got a new set of egg cups, so you've got rid of your old ones? Yeah. Um, I don't think we've got any egg cups. Haven't you? There's nothing wrong. Honestly, it's hardly been, I mean, it's made the window space. That's how good it was. It had hardly been used, that egg cup, because it was a doubler. And I think they were quite small for the egg size that I get. I think they were made more for the small egg, and I have the large egg. Right. So it was, it was never really Just used. Just like your underpants. <laughs> but um, a bit of a dilemma that um, my auntie Nora had. She likes charity shops as well. Mm. Uh, she's got a neighbour. Went out to Graceland's big Elvis fan. He came back. She said, "How was how was Graceland's?" He said, "Oh, it was brilliant. We've got a gift for you." Right? They get out this clock. Like a like a little sort of it's like a Swiss you know the Swiss sort of um, looks cuckoo like a little clock. house like yeah. a cuckoo clock, mm. but on the hour little Elvis comes out the top and goes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she went oh cheers she's not really into Elvis she's more into Jim Reeves and yeah, uh, yeah. Glenn Campbell and stuff. Yeah. But what can you say she said oh thanks mm. thanks mm. for that she took it in the house. Maybe they could get attachments. Maybe you get a little uh, Jim Reeves to pop on the spring, <laughs> and, it, it, and it, that pops out, or whatever. So know. anyway, it's in the house. She's thinking, I'm not going to put that up. It's not her sort of thing. So uh, thinks give it to charity. Of course, she goes down to the charity shop, gives them that. Thinks nothing of it. Goes off to the pub for an afternoon drink. Mm. Anyway, next day she's going out for an afternoon drink again. Passes the charity shop. It's in the wind. Oof. And the chances are her friends are going to pass by. That was a dilemma. Of course. She had to buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. At a hugely inflated price. Comet Relief here is a sort of, um, it, it happens every other year. And, you know, people often do things um, in their workplace or at school. They can dress up, they can raise money in different fun ways. And we were told in a school assembly, it was Comet Relief next Friday, right. everyone has to come along dressed up in fancy dress to school on that day. Has to? Yeah, they said they have to, have to dress up. Right? That's annoying, isn't it? So, I, of course, I'm looking forward to this, because, you know, I'm a sort of aspiring comedian and that. Get to dress up like a clown, right? Spent wow. quite a lot of time getting the old clown outfit together. What did that look like? The what shoes, obviously, I just wore my regular <laughs> shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I had the red nose, a wig, wow. you know, the whole deal. Bow, big bow tie that my mum made for me, like, you know. I thought this would be the best day ever, right? 
get to school. I want you to picture this scene, right, during the assembly in my class of 30. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. Lanky kid dressed as a clown. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. So obviously no one showed up. Dressed what, like an utter dick, except what, me and about two other cops. What disappoints me is that for a man who was um, a self-professed uh, uh, aspiring comedian, you chose the least funny thing in the world to dress as. Yeah. It, clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's not... You're right, and this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> Now that's he knows funny costumes when he do. <laughs> but you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. I periodically use this method throughout my life. And not so long ago, a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics. And I sprang into my old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't... Um, uh, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian one. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is. I yeah, don't know what accent It, it went from vaguely French yeah. to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. And the guy, and I, was, I don't. Uh, he's, well, let's just let me explain to you about. It. I, sorry, I'm not from. Um, and the guy, this world. Yeah, I am from <laughs> Planet Snark. <laughs> and the guy said, uh, "Are you Stephen Merchant?" No. Swear sorry. To God. Not when you were famous. Oh yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, because I hadn't. It hadn't occurred to me. I just. It was like a lapse no! of concentration. God. It was almighty. a lapse of concentration because. Um, and did your bow tie spin now? <laughs> you squared them all and ran away. That's what I did. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know it's one of those things where you know you don't always remember that you've been on the. T- it's not like I That's instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, "Are you still a merchant?" And I. And then you're in this position where you've got to go. Either you've got to admit what you did. Or you've got to carry on the lie. <laughs> and I chose the second one. So I was kind of like, I don't, I don't know who that is. What? I don't know what you're... And he was like, oh God. really? You look a lot like him. I was going, I've never heard. I don't. <laughs> In fact, you are Stephen Merchant. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting stopped for... for I mean, there's so many charities now. It's not just starving people anymore. It's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah, a lot, of new, bank details. a lot of new diseases have cropped up. But that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have, like, one year where they go, this year, uh, you know, hungry people. Right. Next year, people with a limp. <laughs> or... Just like they do in, with, with the China thing, with the year of the cat, year of the rabbit. It's very clear. Yeah. It's that year. That's who we're helping this year. Right. If you've got that problem, it's your year. You're going to have a good one. And who decides? Right. Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting. Um, with, uh, what the, would be the, the first charity. year? What would be the first year? This year? Right, well, we'd, we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what, what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. <laughs> go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot food? And we're not just going to give so them food. So it's not everyone who's hungry. It's specific people. So it's like... Hungry, starving people who are starving. If someone goes, oh, my kid's deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once because right. that's life, isn't it? You've got to give and take in your own life. These things right. that I want, I can't have. I do without. Have something else. But that's there's more so important. many causes that. Right. But that's it could what I'm wait saying, Steve. Okay. Your I know, comes but around. what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Oh, I need out really bad. So does everyone else. Well, why are you giving it to the hungry now? Because oh, if we don't oh. help the hungry now, right? They they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah. Well, where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, this, this is just, it's just a chaotic order. idea. It's, it's a chaotic not. because people who are hungry, there's, there's always going to be people who are hungry. Yeah, but I sort the problem out. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go, right, not only are we just giving you food, right. we're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What, we're you think you... they haven't Let thought of that? Let me hear the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's going to run out. Right. Give them a proper... You see, the problem is, these companies who jump on the back of all... Do you know when I was in the okay. jungle? When right. I was in the jungle, yeah. right? On that travel thing. Yeah. 
I was in that tribe, right? Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop mm. because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so-and-so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out of Amazon with a computer. I saw it. They were using it as a breadboard <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric. It's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe, I wonder what their toilet facilities are like, right? Thinking they might, it might be better than just doing it in a hole. Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They're not a cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out they don't. They still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet, mm. right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there. I'm thinking, oh, brilliant. I go round there, it is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. And this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. OK, so let's do this then. Um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C have you got any food? Got any, got any food? Got any sandwiches? Well, I have, but right. if I give you my sandwich, right. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? I'm going to help you. How? What are you going to do? I'm going to I'm going to make you think about how to make food. Oh, OK, right. How's have you that ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right, well, no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Carl. See you later. Do I just put them in the ground, yeah? Put them in the ground and oh. water them. Oh, there's no water in Dopey Cunt. There is some No, water. there's no water, you Dopey Cunt. That's why we're starving, you Dopey Cunt. Right, well, at that, that point, that's where I go, well, this is a lost cause, eh? Right. There's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all? No, or you're what? not having it. You're right. not having it now. So not only can I have a sandwich, you've given me seeds with no water, you useless, bald-headed fucking twonk. Right, but all I've done there is made the mistake of the computer firm who's given a laptop to a tribe. Right. It's useless. Right. But there's got to be another way around this. Go on, then. Either move... Right. ...because every year they're going to be queuing up saying, I'm going to give me a sandwich. No, you're not having another sandwich. Once again, it's an utterly ill-informed discussion. I'm just saying, there's no point queuing up oh. every year. Do oh. you want a sandwich? Here's oh. a sandwich. Oh, the next year, can I have a sandwich? Where's your brother? He died. <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh, sorting anything. It's buying him an extra day, an extra month or something. But it's Carl, pointless. the point is, like Ricky's just flagged up, is that some of these countries... <laughs> the <laughs> the died. conditions. He died. The conditions are not there to just be able to plant potato seeds. So what are they meant to do then? Do you think we should go out every every month, every year with sandwiches? Is that your answer, like some sort of buffet, an all you can eat thing once a year? <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh. You see, it is bad. I, you know, I don't oh. want to come across harsh. We, th they've got nothing. We oh. waste stuff here. Waste annoys me just as much. Right. When I see sandwich shops chucking stuff out yeah. and bin bags binning it, yeah. when there's people out there who are hungry, it's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't, I don't understand. Right. It's a problem that isn't being so solved. Your, so your conclusion for these people, because there's no water where they are, right, is move. That that is your honest. They should well, move. Well, well, what's your solution? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't, I don't even <laughs> pretend to know. Um, but... But I tell you, it's not just, just... It's sticking a... What's that saying? I don't know, it's sort of sticking a plaster over a hole or something, and the yeah. plaster comes off its problem again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, just, that's it's, the same, yeah. It's the same... I think that was Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> it's come to our attention that the Allied forces, um, all around the world in active service, fighting for their country, even though they're in danger and they're missing their loved ones, they will have one thing in common. The love of one man, the respect of one fellow soldier. He's a civilian, but he's one of them. He is, to some, a, 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 just a, a little bald-headed fool. Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think? What do you think of this? It's an honour, isn't it, to do this? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, there's people out there, Carl. They're fighting in Afghanistan, Iraq, all over the globe. They're in a dark building. They're not breaking radio silence. Morale, often low. There's one man they can turn to to cheer him up. Come on, they want some words of encouragement, some words of wisdom. Something to keep them going. 
a message to the troops. Come on. Go, Carl. What you're is like, it? You're like their Winston Churchill. I don't know what to say to him, really. Do you know any soldiers? Well, the only brother was one, wasn't he? Yeah, mm, but he got kicked out. Why did your brother get kicked out of the army? Um. Well, there's a few things. I, I think you get a few chances. I think the final straw was nipping out of some fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> just think of that! Just think of that! Uh, Amazing. And it's... Just see that, just a little corner shop, but just like uh, things shaking, jumping off the shelves, and they're going, what is this? What is going on? 20 ruffles, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was loads of things. It was that. Um, what else did he do? I think the sergeant wasn't happy that my mum wrote, wrote the sergeant a letter um, trying to get my brother out of going to Northern Ireland. What uh, did she say? I love this. What did she say? Wow. She wrote a letter. Like, oh. trying to get him out of PE. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. It was all Let's like... He's had a chesty cough. Let's not forget, your, your mum is a person who put... Tipex on a spider so your dad couldn't kill it, so she knew it was oh, yeah, the right so spider. In up. case your dad killed a real spider, then thought I better replace it. <laughs> I mean, no, it wasn't, it wasn't just that. That was that it was Tipex so that when my dad was vacking up or my mum was vacking up, it stood out. It wasn't like it wasn't like branding a sheep. Right. It was there so it stood out because they used to have like um what's the name? L laminate flooring. Right. And my dad changed it to darker carpet. So right. all of a sudden you couldn't see it anymore. I'd never heard anything like this. I don't remember this story. You, uh, no, she she no. had a pet spider? What do you mean? It was just a spider. spider. Yeah, you kept a, she kept a spider. They had a spider, but then it became a pet because it was there all the time, as opposed to just getting rid of it straight away. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, because you didn't clear no, away it's straight away, house. suddenly it's a pet. It's it's yeah, it's a house spider. Because they live in houses. You make them welcome to get rid of other little bugs and termites and stuff. My brother's left home, I've left home, my sister's gone. It's something for my mum, isn't it? She's got a budgie. There's only so much you can do with that. It's not as free, is it, as a spider? Right. So she just looks after that one. They oh, live for about so eight lonely. years. I'm bored of a budgie. Get yourself a spider. <laughs> anyway, they live in holes. That's a different thing altogether. She just wrote to the sergeant and said, um, just sort of, you know, look, I didn't want him to join the army. It was his dad. Uh, he didn't get a job. His dad told him, if you don't get a job, you're going to join the army. Mm. He ended up joining. He's joined at a bad time. He hasn't had enough practice at this yet. Can you just let <laughs> him Surely that's for them. Enough Surely that's for them to decide. <laughs> yeah, no. she's on there going, he can't shoot for top. Yeah. He, he was all right about it. The only thing that really annoyed him is my mum started off the letter by saying, hello, Chuck. <laughs> 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 and, um, and he called back though. He did call her and said, "Look, you know, I don't appreciate it being called Chuck and stuff, but I got you know, you know, a lot of mothers are in the same boat." Sorry, he actually mentioned, "Don't call me Chuck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought it up because it's all about respect, isn't it? And well, she's a civilian. Yeah, but I suppose it's it's respect still. He's putting his life on the line. Someone's saying, you know, "All right, Chuck." Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so he phoned back and he said, presumably. Well, I mean, if I was him, I would have... Not only would I have sent him to uh, Northern Ireland instantly, yeah. I'd have put him in the most dangerous spot. Yeah. I mean, that's punishment. To get your mum to write a letter... No, 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 no. He didn't ask me mum to do it. She did it off her own back. He was probably horrified, wasn't he? Oh, Oh, wow. that bit... Imagine that. The sergeant made you go... Attention. Got a little letter here. <laughs> Let me read it to you. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Just reads it out. <laughs> and he goes, Pilkington, come here, you horrible little man. Imagine him reading out in front of the troops. I remember sort of looking up to him, thinking, oh, that's, he's, he's in the army, I want to do that. And he used to come home quite a lot, but he used to do me dad's head in, because he'd turn up with, like, a wagon with, like, a load of his mates in it. Just turn up, on sort of, you know, we didn't have any notice. Just turn up, he'd bring them all in. Come on, he'd be drinking my dad's whiskey, he'd kick off, and dad's saying, get out. Mind the spider. And, uh, Don't chill on the spider. <laughs> yeah, he used to just turn up with, like, half a left troop. And they just take over the house. <laughs> really? My dad used to be on night, so he'd hear all this going on, come down and go, what's going on? Get out! He's going, oh, come on, get out! So it'd sort of kick off a bit. I'd see him for a few minutes and then he'd drive off again on the truck. Not it, a model soldier then? Uh, well, what's, what's a model soldier? I don't know. I mean, I, I always thought it was good. When I was younger and, you know, he joined, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to do that when I get older. And my dad always said, you won't be able to cut it. He said, you can't do it. 
Oh. And I said, no, I can't. I can't. Look how good... Because it used to make me bed really neat. Right. So it was mainly housework you were good at. <laughs> yeah. You're probably better off as a mum. No, no, no. I, I, it was like... Because it has to be immaculate, doesn't it? They look for no creases and that. And I yeah. was a bit paranoid with my bed. Just with the with the duvet and that. I used duvet. to... Duvet? Do they have duvets? Well, don't... I don't know, but just making the bed pride in appearance of, of yeah. the bedroom. Yeah, it's all about discipline. Once, all about, once yeah. I made it, no one could sit on it. I used to get all, all stressed out and feel sick if someone came in and sat on my bed after I'd made it. So don't be coming in. And it was annoying because that's where the CV was. So everyone used to come in to have a go on the CV and sit on my bed. They'd be going, don't sit on my bed. Made it. Right. Why so, do you used to feel sick? It was a bit of a thing. I just OCD. didn't like it. A I, little I, bit of, yeah. It's like, I've, made, I've gone to the trouble of making it. Why have you just come in and sat on it? I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, but, what, but hold on, though. You, you do that in the army. Sergeant Major comes in and goes, Here we in. And he just, he does it for a laugh. He turns over your bed, he pulls out your locker, he gobs on your shoes. Right? He goes, start again, you can. What are you going to do? Going to be sick? No, you're going to go, you're Sergeant Major, I'm going to start again. No, I'd say, why, why did you do that? I'm missing home as it is. I'm stressed out. I'm just trying to make me, me, me surroundings as nice as possible. Teddy's on the floor. You keep coming in right. and messing with it. Can you not do that? Who are you talking to, you little bold gun? Maybe my dad's right, then. Because he said... He said that he, I mean, that... My dad sort of said the bed making's all right. He said, but you're not that good with laces. <laughs> wow! Did you have to tie your laces? Well, I just uh, just never been that good. I can tie them, but they never sort of stay tied for a long time. I have never seen him tie his laces. I've realised that yeah. he always comes in. Are does Suzanne little, do them for you? Is he a little mank? One of those little um, mank trainers where they're all tucked in, where you don't see the laces. I tend to just get a good knot on them and then just leave them and kick them off, and then they're tied permanent. So you've got slip-on laced-up shoes, basically. Yeah. I don't like well, laces. I don't understand enough. why laces are good anyway when you're in the army, especially with boots. You have boots with like about 60 holes in them. If you're in a rush, if you're in bed, you get out of the bed, you make the bed, the sergeant comes in, rips it apart again, he's going, there's a war, and you're going, stop messing with the bed. <laughs> and then I'm there trying to put my boots on. You've got 60 laces. I don't understand why Velcro hasn't been used. Velcro is ideal for a war situation. You're in bed, woo, siren goes off, mm. you jump out. Why do you want boots with loads of laces? Well, that's a thought for the, uh... <laughs> if there's yeah. any top brass listening. How would you cope, Carl, in a war situation? Ignore the, 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 the mechanics of being a soldier. I'm talking about the fear. I mean, these men and women are brave beyond compare. Mm. Constantly under duress. I was told he had good pain threshold. By whom? Um, a woman at that face rub place I went to. Right. She, uh Because they ask you when you go in. She said, what's your pain threshold like? I said, I don't know. I want to avoid it. She was going, yeah, but, you know, would you say you're very, very good, medium or bad? I can't imagine you getting hurt much because because there's the signals to the brain. You've got, you know, it just is dulled, mm. isn't it, with you? So you don't really... Yeah, but then Suzanne always moans at me when I'm going, oh, God, my wisdom teeth is aching. She's going, oh, shut up. She said, you haven't got any wisdom teeth, you don't, you can. <laughs> no, she just always goes, I had it, and I didn't make a fuss, but it's one of them things that you can't get through to people pain, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't know what your pain threshold is. So, like I say, I've got brilliant pain threshold. I'm saying my tooth's hurting. She's saying, oh, shut up. But she doesn't know. I wish you'd... I think I've talked about it before about giving someone the pain that you've got. So you go, there, have a feel of that. I'm yeah. nagging here. Yeah, but you've made it up that you've got a high pain threshold. This isn't. This, no. this is not a sign of No, the woman freedom. told me. The woman told me. Well, does she, she know? Because I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> when I had the face rub, yeah, she was sticking electric into my head. And she was going. <laughs> what sort of place is this? This wasn't a spa. No, it was. It's what Jesus now. Christ! What she she I don't know. So she just plugged something into the mains. She plugged something in and rolled Did it. Did she over. have an assistant called Igor? Was it in a castle in Bavaria? She plugged this thing in, rolled it over my head, <laughs> and said, "Is that hurting?" I was going, "No." She went, "All oh, right." And she said, and then by the end of it, she said, "Look at that. I had that on full." I said, "What is it?" She said, "It's an electric current that does something." I was going, "Really?" That does something. She's a scientist. <laughs> and, um, She's yeah. a pain yet. She said, "She said no. When you fill out that form, just put you really good at pain threshold." But you're really good at pain. You're going to come again? Well, yeah, 50 quid. Let's, go, like, let's try on your testicles next time. So, you know, 
Oh, sorry, how is this? What was this supposed to be achie- achieving? It was why like is, a face why rub. You've gone in for a facial, and she's testing out what well, your pain well, threshold is. Well, that's what I said. I said, hang on a minute. What do you mean? It's meant to be relaxing this. Yeah. You normally have whale noises happening, <laughs> yeah. and now it's going to be me screaming. She said, no, no, it's just, you know, we have to ask, we have to make sure, because yeah. there is a bit of pain. Like you know, heat. Yeah. There's heat in these hot yeah. cloths. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Better thumb screws. Let's get the thumb screws out now. Yeah. And plus all that kidney stone pain that yeah, I but had. you just were in agony when you had the kidney stones. You don't, I don't remember you having this triumphant... Absolutely, you gave up Winston, yeah. Winston, Winston. Yeah, because you have to to get seen. If I go in there and I'm going, I'm in agony, and they're going, you don't look like you're in agony. I went, I'd be at the back of the queue. So you have to go in and go... And so, they're going, quick, get him in. So pain threshold is good for yourself, but it's not good for other people. So you were bullshitting? You didn't feel pain at all? I was in agony, but I can hold it off. I can sit there and be quiet and have a sweat on. But if you do that in hospital waiting room, it'll be the little div who's coming with a pan on his head, who's screaming <laughs> and saying his head's throbbing. That's what I'm saying. So to get seen, you have to put it on. It's like a baby crying. There's nothing wrong with it. What's he crying for? He's probably hungry. Well, I'm hungry. I'm not crying. But that's what they use, isn't it, right. to get attention. So you're, so you're braver than a baby, is what you're saying. You're braver than a baby. That's all we've established here. In some cases, in, not in when others. When you feel like the form. Not in <laughs> others. Sometimes babies are braver. When yeah. are babies braver? You can chuck them in a pool when they don't panic. <laughs> I'm Sorry, will you leave my baby alone? No, I'm doing an experiment. Mr. Pilton, will you stop throwing children in the pool? No, babies. You're, ba- you're barred from this swimming pool from now on. I mean babies. It's the same way you can chuck one out of a window and it can land and it won't break its back. It's no, no, that's not true. true. Do not do, do that. Not do that. If that you're a maniac, you, you listen to this. You cannot throw a baby out of a window. It's just what I Earlier you hear that, you're thinking of a cat and don't throw cats out. Don't throw any living thing yeah, out of a... It's just what Earlier I You can't throw a baby out of the window and it won't break its back. What are you talking no, about? No, it's just there's a certain height. It's all about us tensing up. We tense up, don't we? It's like how once you someone who fell out of a plane, they passed out, and because they passed out when they landed, they were relaxed. They no. woke up, they were like, well, yeah, what happened then? Someone fell out of a plane. <laughs> That's bollocks. It's not, honestly. How no. far was the plane? Oh, high up. It's a plane, isn't it? Well, what's the lowest height well, that a plane well, could be at? Even if it was at... 30 feet, that's a height, isn't it? It's a fall without... Yeah, exactly. But if was, it was, the plane, higher... was the plane just on the runway? No, it was iron up, iron up. It was iron up enough. Is this where you went <laughs> for the holiday? <laughs> We're going to high up enough. <laughs> Fuck me. Can't, can't even talk. So, yeah, pain oh. threshold. I'm very good at it. So, uh, would you say you've ever been brave? Because I was thinking before we did this... Uh, I can't think of a time when I've ever been brave. I don't think I've been cowardly. I've just never been in a situation where I needed to be brave, particularly. And I've always managed to avoid fights, conflicts. Yeah. You see, I, uh, when I was in Salford, I had a nip to Greg's to get a pasty. Mm. I heard some bells going off. I came out. I just thought, oh, I don't know what that is. Went over to the car, sort of thinking, oh, I can't wait to have this pasty when I get home. Cup mm. of tea, nice cup of tea, maybe a bit of bread. I love the fact that, that his head was just filled with food as he was <laughs> buying food and thinking food. When he's eating, I'm thinking, I'm eating food. Food. Just just one big globular mess of food cells in his head yeah. for, the, for the duration of the food experience. I can remember that food thought going on now, and it was probably, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> but I remember how happy I was. I'm out at the Greggs, I've got what I want, I'm on my way home, this pie's hot, it's going to be hot when I get home, it's going to be a nice cup of tea, bread. These are the things you save, and yet you forget really important facts. Yeah, he doesn't know why wars are happening, yeah. but he does remember this. Yeah, but yeah. Listen, this is why I remember it. Like I said, you forgot the bit that I said. A bell going off. Mm. I don't know what's going on there. I'm walking over the road, put the key in the car, I turn round, bloke comes running out of the post office, obviously the bell's gone off, he's got a big shotgun, balaclava on, and he stops and looks at me, he's there with a big gun in his hand, and he's looking at me. And I just, I wasn't scared, I just was thinking, does he want me pie? (laughs) I remember thinking, if he said, if he said, I want that, I'd have to give it up. (laughs) So a man with a gun? I told Suzanne, she said, no, he's probably thinking about nicking your car. He's got well, he key. didn't have a car ready. He came no, here, he had the balaclava. It. He had the balaclava, the gun. And he goes, fuck me, I forgot the car. In the end, he sort of ran off down the back alley. I love the fact that you he looked over at you for a split second and you thought he might be interested in your Was pie. there other people around? Were Wait you sure it. this happened and you weren't reading a comic book? No, it happened. And so he looked you in the face. He yeah, saw you. his balaclava. He made eye contact. I looked at him. Everything sort of stopped for a minute. And then he just sort of legged it off down the back alley. 
And uh, you, what, what, did you, did, what did you say to the police when you obviously I were... I didn't, I just went. Well, you were a witness to the crime. 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 Like I said, it was warm. It's not going to stay warm forever, is it? But when, they, when, when it was on Crime Watch a few weeks later... No, said it wasn't. Dad, that's what was weird. I said to Suzanne, oh, let's watch, like, ground reports tonight, see if I'm on the telly or anything. Nothing. Didn't even get reported. Why would you be on the telly if you just ran just away? Just didn't say CCTV or something like that. If I was involved in it, they went, this happened today in Salford, outside Greg's. Are you this man with a pie? I wanted to make sure I was well out of this one. Because Suzanne sort of said, oh, should you get involved? But you shouldn't get involved, because then I'm at threat, I'm at risk, aren't I? Nobody well, there was killed. You are. We're back to bravery again, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, it is bravery. Go on, in. Next door but one. There's a fella there. He, uh, he likes a drink. He came home late one night, banging on the door. Obviously forgot his key. He was trying to kick the door in. I looked out the window, and he was like thinking someone's breaking in. Right? I see it's in. I saw all the curtains twitching. He just went back to bed. Now I kept an eye on him. He kicked so hard, he fell back, dropped his curry, landed in the road. <laughs> dropped his curry! Right. Oh, God, why didn't he get a pie from Greg's? Because that lands and it's still fine. So, anyway, he passes out. Right. Curry all over the shop. Yeah. Head in the road. Cars come down that road. Yeah. Sometimes pretty fast. Yeah, it's night time. He could yeah. get his head squashed. Yeah. Like I said, curtains are still a switching, no one's a helping. <laughs> <laughs> I I go out there and I go, You alright, you alright? And he's he's totally off his head. He's obviously had a you know, right skin full. Uh, he's going, oh, where am I, where am I? I'm going, you're outside your house, but you've got to get off the road because you're going to get squashed. So he's like, oh. And he could hardly move, so I sort of picked him up, sat him on the pavement, sort of picked up the curry and stuff. Suzanne came out, what's going on? I said, oh, look at him, he's in right state. Anyway, sort of coming round a little bit. Um, in the end, I said, where's your keys? Got him in his house. Job done. But that's not bravery. That's not bravery. There was no there's threat no, to you. No. It's just put yourself out of it for two minutes. It is bravery because he's he's out of his head. He could have thought I was attacking him. He could have swung at me. Now the good he's thing is he's lying in the road, unconscious, covered in curry. <laughs> this this is not a threat. It is a threat. I'm out on the street late at night. Someone could have come around the corner and thought I was mugging him. And, and then they, they attacked do? me. Why would they attack you? They because they think, what are you doing? What are you doing? People don't ask questions because you're not allowed to. Like with a sergeant, they chip in straight away. I know what's going on here. No, you don't. You don't know the full story. He's pissed off and his curry all over it. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't blood. It's masala. <laughs> You hear about this all the time, misunderstandings. <laughs> now, I helped him. The day after, he remembers, he comes round and he gave me some minced meat that he had left over. <laughs> I love this! Where do you live? This is amazing! Oh, my God! So the thing oh is, it God. goes to show that I put myself out, he appreciated it, he said, you're right, you know, the way cars come round here, oh, I'd, I'd had a bit of a week, you know, I'd had a lot to drink, good on you. Now, no-one else chipped in. Now, it is bravery, kind of, because no. no one else went out there and helped. You didn't even know about that. It's only because you just asked. It was ages ago. I don't shout about it. I don't want an award. <laughs> have a go hero. I don't want any of that. I just <laughs> There's bits. no have a go did hero you, about it. Did you take the mince meat? Yeah, I did, yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah. That's uh, better than an award in a way, isn't it? I told him that. So, it depends. I think it's different <laughs> ways. Have a mince meat. I love that. <laughs> I, would, uh, I was saved by a, a bald man. Slaughter my finest pig, <laughs> mince the meat, and send it to him. What about phrases from the uh, war days? What about things like um, careless talk costs lives? What do you make of that? Careless talk? I suppose just busy chatting in a trench rather than getting out there. <laughs> Have another go. <laughs> Careless talk costs lives. They used to have posters up all over London and other cities. Careless talk costs, costs lives. lives. There was another one, there's another saying that means the saying that might give you a clue. The walls have ears. Yeah, but that just means um, don't be slagging someone off because <laughs> someone will hear it, pass it on, and then they'll end up fighting their own instead of who they should be fighting. Well, no, you're yeah. almost there, but think yeah. about what you mean. It's not about gossip, it's not about... But it, in a way it is, it's, but it's, it's very specific gossip. Much more important, tittle-tattle. 
Careless whispers. No, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's George, George Michael. Michael. Say again. What's the first one again? Careless Cal talk Cal costs Cal lives. I don't know. I imagine it being like a. Don't go shooting your mouth off about things you know about the war effort, because there might be a German spy in the pub disguised as a barmaid. Oh, you're lovely, Tracy's going, yeah, I am, Carl. What do you know about no, the war? That's What's true, you know? that does happen. I remember our my brother being in the army, he, he had the same thing. What? He was told, he was told not to, because he liked the women and that. Yeah. And he was told, listen. One of them might be a German spy? Yeah. He said, don't, don't be going out with German women, because they're quite muscly. And it could be a man. There'll be a gang of them. No, and they'll do you in. Sorry, your brother was told... Don't go out with a gang of German women because they're quite muscly and they might do you in. Yeah, because it's all part of the thing. They sort of go out, like you say, pretending they just like women out on the night because he was, he was in Germany for a bit, he was posted over there. Right. And apparently they target like British soldiers and that. And like I say, he, he liked his women. He'd just go along with it thinking this is good. Um, you know, act tongue baby or whatever. <laughs> That's okay, and you too. Hey, action baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, action baby. Yeah. And then, you know, got him an headlock and good night Vienna. <laughs> good night Vienna. Why, uh, why, would they, why are these random German women just killing oh, sorry, it, British blokes? What, what's the reason for this? It was a proper thing. I remember him telling me, telling oh, me, Mum, saying, oh, God, I had a right dilemma. I met some women, German. Couldn't go with them, though, because we were told that there might be, uh, you know, there might be trouble. Really, yeah. Honestly, that's that's Sorry, a fact. British soldiers were getting beaten up by German women. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> Can't be. Why? If you're caught off guard, you're just thinking, oh, you know, out with the ladies, and then they suddenly turn on you. It's a shock. It's but a surprise element. Why are they element. beating them up? It's, it's presumably talking about the because Cold he's War. a soldier. Yeah, but they, we they, they were allies then. Well, when your brother was stationed in Germany. It wasn't. It wasn't occupied Germany. We hadn't invaded. It wasn't. It wasn't the German resistance. They were stationed there because we're all in it together now. I don't know. Then there's just a problem with German women. <laughs> um, I thought we could play uh, Room 101. Room 101, of course, is. Uh, Taken from uh, George Orwell's 1984. Room of all your fears and terrors. And... So, uh, is there a copyright issue here? Uh, can we steal this idea? Well, yeah. Uh, well, let's play Room 102. Clever. This is the room next door to Room 101, which is worse, in my opinion. So, Carl, these are things that really annoy you. Uh, slugs. Was in there? Slugs. So, um. And then, then, then there's, uh, you have to put a case forward and me and Steve decide whether slugs go in or whether they, they stay out, whether they've got a purpose. It's, ju it's just because I'm having a problem with slugs at the moment. There's a lot of slugs coming in the house. Why? I don't know. I just, they can get where, like, water can't, you know what I mean? Because they, they're boneless, aren't they? So well, any little gap. So it's water boneless. There's not many bones in water. No, no, that's what I said. Why, why banish them all to room 102, slugs? Because they're harmless, aren't they? All I know is they're clogging up my piping. <laughs> I had to go out and buy a plunger. I hadn't seen them since like comics when I was a kid. And I suddenly thought I need one of them things that I always saw in comics. I, I never thought I'd need one of them in my life. I've got slugs in my pipes. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out, three quid it was. I had no idea what the going rate is for a plunger. Gave it a bit of a plunge. Uh, and I think it was slugs. Like all like bits of black stuff came up. I think it was slugs in there, like what, broken up what, slugs. Well, ha hang on, hang on, hang on. It could just be black gunk. Could, no, could no, it? it looked very sluggish. Because <laughs> remember, I've had a problem with them anyway. I'll go to the toilet, whatever. Look round. There's a slug climbing up the wall out of a shower basin thing. Are you sure it's a slug? Yeah, definitely, definitely slugs. I have to keep chucking them out because I don't like killing anything. Right. I, I didn't want to kill the slugs with slug pellets. I bought some copper ribbon. Right. They don't like going over that. They don't do they? like that. They, they get, get a little shot. Charge, yeah. But. Now that should be a warning, but instead they're diverting. They've done a diversion, they've gone up the wall and across. <laughs> now it's like, that's a warning. That's like having a no trespassing sign. Yeah. And they're just going, bollocks to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting in. And it's annoying me. And now you get to a point when you do say, well, if they carry on like this, I'll have to kill them because they're not, how, how much, how they're much? They're not playing by the rules. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what the purpose is.
He just sit there still. I don't see him doing anything. I was lo looking at one close up. But well, what do you want to do? Be reading Rusa. What do you want a slug to do? In the same way you see a bee collecting pollen, good, it's doing its little work. But they're, they're Ants carrying big leaves or whatever. But the slugs just sat in the They're all the doing kitchen. the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. That slug is out. It's eating. That it's is finding not, food. No food. There's no food in our kitchen for a slug. Believe me. There's not enough there for me sometimes. But never mind a slug. It's, there's nothing for it. Definitely not in the shower. What's he doing? <laughs> so I told you ages ago about how the, they cause more problems than good. They eat, they eat cabbage. Right. Um, when they shouldn't be. Um, they get in letterboxes and nick stamps. They don't nick stamps. They eat the stamps. They like the glue on it. Right. Right. Is this a big problem, though? <laughs> is there an epidemic of slugs eating stamps? But I think it is, and that's why they're so slow. I think they're sweating glue. And right? it's they're bit. eating all them, and, and, and that's, that's why they're sticking to stuff. Have you ever picked up a slug? Well sticky, they give off this glue. It's like the, all the glue they've eaten off stamps. They panic, and when they sweat, they sweat glue. Sweat? <laughs> think of a slug! A slug! <laughs> what do you mean they sweat glue? If you're it's, making up nature. It makes sense. <laughs> this is just a nonsense theory. It's just what I've noticed on them. Right, Rick, do you allow slugs in room 102? Well, I just want, I think we should, you know, you know, if, if they're going to be gone forever, then we should, we should put a case forward. They're amazing creatures. What do they do for the world? Their food. It's not good enough, that. Not good enough. What do you mean? But like that's well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Surely them being food. Just having problems with them at the moment. I spent three quid on a plunger, and I don't like the idea that every time I get up in the night to go into the toilet, wherever I've got to put the light on because I might have a bit of sluggage between my toes. Sluggage, a little bit of sluggage between my toes. Right. Okay. Well, so we need to move on. So you are not putting them in. I'm not putting slugs. All in. All right. Slugs have not gone in, Carl. I'm afraid. What's your next one? Okay. Number two. Um. People who don't want to do what what the brains would be better at doing. Right. Okay. Now I've got to get around that sentence. Now tell me again. Brains that don't want to do what their owners are good at. Ah. So now it's the brain's fault. Can you just expand on that point, please, KP? Do you know, like, pe people decide what they want to do. Right. Don't they, for a living. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're not good enough. Right. You mean they have a dream and they can't fulfil it because they haven't got the, the, the skill or...? Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. No. no. It's just that they haven't unlocked the thing that they're good at. They want to go well, at of course. So, but, I mean, so it's, that's a, there's much bigger issues there that um, uh, the poor working-class people don't get the same opportunities. When you're worrying about whether you're going to live through the next few days, you don't start thinking, I wonder if I can play the cello. Can I so, refer you back though, Rick? You made an interesting point there, but I fear that's not exactly what Carl was saying. I don't on. think that his point was quite uh, that profound. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I don't know. There was something to do with the brain not allowing its owner. Yeah, because that's the bit that annoys me. Fair enough if a brain hasn't decided what it wants to do. Because you What go, is this? Let, it, let oh, him finish. God, this thing it about finish. the brain. Shut up. Because it, it. it hasn't found its destiny type thing. Brain but when someone is good at something and they know the brain is good at something, but then they don't want to do it and they want to go off and do something else. You now they say in this country the problem is we haven't got enough tradesmen. Right. We don't have enough plumbers. Right. There's enough plumbers' brains. I don't know what the fuck that means. Shut up. Let what him are you please. talking about? Shut up. Let him please finish. Because this brains, is like, this is like brains, beds and pillows again. Brains have not changed over the years. The brain is exactly the same. But it's the owner of the brain that's in charge. The brain could be going. I want to go for a walk, but if your body's too lazy to get up and go and see the stuff, the brain isn't going to get what it wants. It doesn't make what? sense, Carl. Right, you are your brain. All right, let's go to the extreme. People with no legs who want to be swimmers. Don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! I'm so annoyed. Oh. Is this a big problem? It's, it's madness, isn't it? It's mad that the brain wants to do that so much. The brain's in the wrong, in the wrong body, almost. Yeah. Are you with me? No. A plumber, a plumber, a plumber who can plumb is annoying when he jacks it in as a living because there's other brains who can't do plumbing. They don't get their head round it. Means I don't know what you're putting in room 102 because you're saying these. It's like this brains wandering around Who's looking for brain? a body and it goes, oh, I'll choose that body. Hang on, this body doesn't even want to do some plumbing. It's, it's a matter of taste. Sometimes it's just a matter of taste. It's, I'm not putting a brain in. It's just people. Um, if I had a really good skill. 
I don't that that I'd use it. Really? So people who don't fulfil their own potential. Is that a better point? Yeah, that's what I meant. Who am I talking to now, Carl or his brain? We're both listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put in people who don't fulfil their full potential. Slugs are safe. What's your next thing to try and get in room 102? It's a tricky one, this. Go on. It's, it's people who, um, who think that humans are special. Do you know what I mean? But you think that. No, I don't. I don't think humans are special. I but think what, some of us are. Look at it like this. You see, I think we think we're important because yeah. we just do. Well, I don't, but some do. And they're the ones who want to get rid of. <laughs> Another argument with himself. Now, we think we're special. There might be something else going on that's more important. We're in this universe, aren't we? Yeah. They try to make a new universe. What do you mean? There's a machine somewhere. What? A big bang. They're making a big bang again. Right, well, that you've got that completely wrong, but sure. They're not trying to create a new world. They're trying to recreate the conditions that happened at the beginning of the Big Bang. All right, so they... But the world came... different. But the world came from the Big Bang. Yeah, they're trying to recreate the conditions so they can test and they can experiment to see Dangerous. the conditions before... So that why are they true. doing that? Who's allowed that? <laughs> this is what annoys me. It's because humans think they're special. Oh, who made the Big Bang? Oh, I'd like my name on that. I want to <laughs> claim it. <laughs> why do people always want to better someone else? It's happened. Let them have it. Okay, right, okay, Carl, you're in charge of the world now. You are this... You, you're all-powerful. You're like a god, okay? You can do anything. You go, you call all the scientists, and they go, What do you want of us? Oh, oh, orange-headed one. What the fuck do you want of us? Right? What do you want them to do? Go. What do you say? Uh. Well, I want, I want to come in and... How long have they been working on the Big Bang idea? Forget it, it just, you've got every science... No, but I don't just want to come in and poo-poo that, because they're going to... Poo-poo. They've, they've done a lot of research well, on Hold it. on, you, you wanted to stop a minute ago. Yeah, I know, but you don't just come in, guns are blazing. I'd say, I'd say, hello, everyone. You can do anything you want. Go on, go on, Hello, Ed. everyone. Hello, Carl, leader. Right, uh, listen, um, this Big Bang thing you've been doing... Yeah, well, that's uh, just only a few of us. That's, like, less than a millionth of a percent of us. We're all here. Yeah. yeah. I've dropped AIDS research. I've dropped cancer research. Right, well, why'd you drop that? Uh, well, Who's told you to do that? Well, no, we just, well, we knocked off. They said you wanted to tell us something. We're all here. Every scientist in the world well, is listen, here. Listen, what research are you doing? Oh, well, I'm looking at um, uh, what happens if you give Feminax to an owl. What happens? Well, I'm halfway through it. You, I got called away. Look, I'm really busy. What do you want me to work on? Who, Who says they're doing cancer? cancer? Go back. Go back. Go back to work. <laughs> right. OK. The rest of us I've doing been... stuff that you think we're fanning around with, what would you want us Listen, to do? Well, I can't do it all today. What about me? I was doing AIDS. Hang on a minute. I was doing AIDS. You just wait a minute. Right, OK. Why does cancer get to go back? Are you saying that cancer's a bigger problem than AIDS? You I'm go back to, to work. So I'm going to go back. I'm doing... Oh, I'm doing restless legs. Right, and can go. everybody want the Big Bang people leave? <laughs> Tell you another problem that I've worked out. Really? It might might make a slight difference on fat people. Don't put a light in a fridge. Because that's just that's just that night when they get peckish. They can see everything that's in there. Don't put the light there. You don't need a light in a fridge. There's no lights in other cupboards. Yet where there's food, it's like fat is getting up at four in the morning. What can they have? What's that at the back? Get rid of the light, they'd eat less. That might there might be some logic in that. That's interesting. Well, what's it there for? Tell me what that light is there for. They say turn off your standby light, yet you've got a light in your fridge well, no, it is showing you off. where tomatoes are. You know, but it's turned chocolate. off when you shut the, you don't, the light's not on when the door's not open. Yes, but a fat person has always got the fridge door open. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you saying in a way is that the free market, capitalism being what it is, which has allowed companies, food manufacturers to make them more full of more salt, more fat, and in order to well, attract you, in order to make more profits, is actually resulting in obesity. I was in a cafe, right? Um, I normally like to go in there, and I might have beans on toast, mm. uh, cheese on top. Tea. I might have a bit of cheese. Yeah, cheddar on top. Uh, only if they offer. I sometimes sort of think I shouldn't have it, so mm. I'll only have it if they say you want cheese. Oh, okay. And then it's down to their problem. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of like they made me have that. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sat in there. This little fella, I'd say he was from like Africa or something. Yeah. Uh, came in, had a little top hat on, <laughs> suitcase, and red jeans. Dead happy he was. 
Uh, I think he just turned up to London. It's his first day out, and he's probably thinking, "I can't believe me, look, I've got a choice here." Anyway, the difference was. Oh, conjecture. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. yeah go the on. difference was he went in, and he said, "Have you got any porridge?" He asked for two bowls for the price of one. It was a little bit of a like a fuffle. Yeah, a little bit because he couldn't understand why you've got loads of porridge. Oh, give me two portions. But the, what, what what I found interesting is he didn't want to go for the donut or the pastry because in his country they don't they don't have it. Mm. So food where he's from is for what food is for, isn't it? Giving you energy. Yeah. Here it's not about that, is it? No. You go. Oh, I'd, I'd love a little uh, muffin. So I just found I just found it interesting. That's all my point is that he could have anything. He's come over here. He's in London. Yeah. He's got loads of stuff on offer. Yeah. He still wants his porridge. Do you think uh, that? Well, firstly, do you think perhaps he had travelled from the past <laughs> <laughs> in some kind of time machine? <laughs> but secondly, do you think that now that he'll have a, he'll, he'll have a, his first taste of a donut, won't he, or a pan of chocolate? Do you think you'll get the taste of it next time you see him? Well, maybe that's that's yeah, how it works, isn't it? I mean, out. why do I like? Hey, well, next time we're gonna go. Hello, usual. No, chef de porridge. I want a donut. That's that's what happens, isn't it? It's all about a mixture. You need a mixture in your body. You need to have, like I've told said to you before, I get an urge for things that I don't even know about. You know what I mean? What, like what? Anything. The one that always surprises me are plums. <laughs> <laughs> because I shouldn't get an urge for plums. I don't like them enough, but if I pass them in a supermarket, I go, I want them for a bit. Yeah, that, I think you need that. And I go mad, I'll eat a full packet in a day. I'll eat like six and get bellyache and that. And I know I shouldn't overdo it with them. But it's just like... My body... He's is, like a creature, isn't he? My body just calls out for stuff. It doesn't, Carl. No, he feels that way because I wouldn't normally buy him. My favourite fruit, I, I like an apple, love a banana. Mm. I've got into um, blackberries. Yeah. Quite expensive, but a bit of a treat. I think there's plenty of fruit out there. Bananas, apples, oranges. We've got plenty of fruit. They can't get rid of fruit quick enough. There's loads of stuff with fruit in now. Shower gel with kiwi in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they can't get rid of it because it's too much. So they just go, what can we do with all this stuff? We'll stick it in there. Orange juice. I, t I had orange juice sort of cordial. Yeah. It tastes a bit weird, isn't it, orange? Sneaked a bit of pineapple in. <laughs> orange and pineapple. You can't get rid of the stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Satsuma. Easy to peel. What I don't like is the big oranges. You have to peel them and you get it on your... You well, know. They're the ones I eat when I'm in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you just dunk it. under the water afterwards that's and you're clean again. If I'm going to have a bath, then, yeah. you, then that's what you do. You so it's two it. treats. It's an orange and a bath. I mean, that's amazing. That's an amazing thing to look forward to. Don't you think you've blown that for when you're old, when you're 74? And I go, I'll tell you what, Carl, lovely treats, a bath and an orange. Done it. I did it when I was 36. So, uh, have you heard Desert Island Discs? Yeah. Good, let's do that. Right, um, forget the eight records, we well, can't play them anyway. We can't play them anyway. I know, but for people in other countries, they may not be familiar with those island discs. Oh, it's a, it's a, a programme, it's a, a real national institution here. They, they get, you know, prime ministers and leaders of men and really eminent people to go on. And you talk about your life and you choose your eight favourite um, tunes. You take a, a luxury item and um, you're allowed to take any book. I did it. Um, and I, I took a book, I think a tabletop book of art. Why would you take that? Oh, oh so it's, you can't take anything that's useful. It's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's and your luxury item, you can't. I took a vat of Novocaine. I thought, if I get toothache, I'm sipping on that till I die. If I'm stuck here with nothing to do, I've got eight records, I'm going to be sick of them. That's the thing. I'm looking at art, I'm le at least I'm looking at something, you know. What book would you take, Carl? Well, I wouldn't take an art book anyway, I know that. Right, OK, because so come on in, get one sick book. Of it. You're going to get sick of it. Right, one book. You can't get sick of art, either. You okay. can. You can. You can have a brilliant <sighs> picture on your wall, but eventually... Remember what I've said to you? Mm. Your eyes get bored of anything. <laughs> I don't remember him saying that. I think I blanked out. I think he came in one ear straight out the other. Well, that's why relationships break up, <laughs> because the, the eyes get sick of looking at that other person, and you go, my eyes want to change. That's what it's all about. <laughs> my eyes want to change. OK, come Sorry, on, love. Fucking hell, choose a book to I'd take. I'd probably take a dictionary or something like oh, that. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why? Why would you take a dictionary? Just because I'm not that good with words. But who, what do you want words for? You're not talking to anyone anymore. You don't have to worry about the vocabulary. You have to worry about 
Oh, but there'll be a lot of talking to yourself, probably. It'd be nice to sort of... Oh, so you're going to bring yourself up on your grammar, are you? You talk <laughs> to yourself and you go, oh, my God, you're an idiot. You don't say it like that. That's well, if you've got to talk to yourself, it'd be nice to have Why are you someone... talking to yourself, you maniac? Is there no-one else about? Yeah, but you don't open your mouth and actually verbally talk in order to talk... But also, what does it matter if you've got a dictionary or not? Who's arguing with who? Because sometimes I feel frustrated when I don't... I can't get my point across. But it's just you! Exactly, you already that's know your point! Look so, so how you're getting annoyed now. You're annoyed with me because I can't explain what I mean. Yeah. I don't want to be annoying myself. <laughs> you be annoying yourself? But you'll already understand your point. You don't need to vocalise no, it. sometimes I think through what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think, does that make sense? And sometimes I'll go, no, it doesn't. And I'll go, why is that? And then you, you're working it out in your head. Now, if I've got a better vocab, I'll have a good little chat. <laughs> what? A good little what? chat? With yourself. If you're not keeping yourself interested in anything, your brain's going to turn to mush. Now, I'm, I'm, I you feel. I'm teaching my brain stuff, keeping it active. Mm. The only thing you've got on that island mm. is your imagination mm. and your thoughts. Now, if you can make those imaginations and thoughts better, which you do with language, you're going to have a better time, aren't you? Look, well, no, if you've had the thought, you've had the thought. You don't go, hold on, I'd have a thought here, but I can't think of the word. You don't think in language in that same way, do you, really? You think more conceptually. When someone came up, I, oh, guess what? I've just found the cure for... Oh, I can't think of the word. Forget well, it, I won't I've just worked out the cure for... Eh? I can't think of the word. Let's look it up. What is it? Cancer. No, but just to think... Language is a powerful thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Oh, he's run out of words. You see, this is what I'm saying. It's sometimes difficult for me to get my point across with what I mean. Yeah, but that's fair enough if you're communicating, say, in this environment. And it's, dare I say it, perhaps a shame that you didn't read a dictionary before we started doing the broadcasting. But anyway, you've waited till you're on a desert island with no one well, uh, around. Well, no, no. Well, I, I think uh, by then, well, by the time you get shipwrecked, there would probably be a few more entries to the dictionary. Um, grippage. Foodage. Rumminging. <laughs> replenishing. But, but, so what? All words are made up. Orange. One day, someone went, what? Oh, he's got a head... That's, that's, he's got a head like something. He's got a head, head, he's got a head like a fucking what? I don't even know what. He's got a head like a fucking what? And the other thing is, say if I am captured... By who? who? What? By that's who? By a boat. That's passive. Why are you captured? captured? You mean saved? All right, saved then, yeah. OK. If I'm sa there you go again, you see. I went for captured instead of saved. <laughs> You're captured you're by some pirates. Talking to anyone, Carl, in your head, it didn't matter. You knew what you meant. When you sat there on that desert island, you thought, oh, if I'm captured by a boat. They didn't come over and go, hi, Carl, we've come to save you. You wouldn't go, well, no, I don't want to save him, I want capturing. I go, right, sorry, wait for the next boat. It didn't matter. You knew what you meant. You'd go, help, and you'd get do on the you, boat. Do you think in, in words that you don't use? You've only got yourself for company. Yes, but you if don't... you bore yourself, what's the point? <laughs> What is the point, seriously? But how are you going to... Well, so you think you're going to read that dictionary and you're going to be better company because you're going to be impressing yourself with longer words. You're going to go... If a boat passes and there goes a fella over there on that island, let's go and get him. Now, the way I am at the moment, they'd go, you all right? And I'd go, you are? And they go, oh, don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> where? Imagine that! Whereas if I sort of say something with a big word that I can't think of right now, they'll go, oh, who's that? He sounds like he knows his... Yoo-hoo! Anti-disestablementarianism! Get him on this boat now! <laughs> we must have that wit! All right, you, you get... <laughs> Come through. But then I'm on the news and they go, oh, Carl, what was it like on the island? And I can start saying stuff. I it can't... was scrambarious! <laughs> No, but then I think it makes it more interesting, whereas at, the, at this moment in time, I'd struggle to tell them I what think it's like. I like the idea of you trying to educate about yourself. I love the idea. But do it now. But there's so many other books. If I'm stuck with one... OK, the dictionary. You've got a dictionary. What's Fine. your luxury item? What's your luxury item? Quick. Let's get off this island. Come on. What did you take for your luxury? A vat of Novocaine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some Revels. A big sort of bag. A big bag of Revels. A big bag of Revels. Just for variety. But there's no variety particularly in Rebels, they're joking, all chocolate, aren't they? No, all different. You've got orange ones, you've got coffee, caramel, Malteser. I mean, taking Novocaine isn't great, is it? If you don't get toothache, you'll be going, why don't they bring Rebels? <laughs> Carl, what doesn't annoy you? That's the question, really. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and... Uh, the, the different things annoy me. But I don't just go about getting annoyed. Seems Stuff like happens. It. No, no, no. Stuff happens. What's annoyed you this week? 
Um, I mean, I tend to get annoyed when people around me get annoyed. I'm never the one who's going in somewhere getting annoyed. I'm quite happy go lucky, man. <laughs> you are gonna lie. No, that's rubbish. Yeah, uh, there is nothing about. No one would ever say that. No one. I would just like Carl Pilkington. Oh, he's happy go lucky. <laughs> Whenever I see him, he's skipping along, whistling a tune. I whistle a lot. I've told you. I'm yeah, only to annoy people when you're playing Scrabble. No, I, I, I just. At the end of the day, I think the problem is most of the day I'm on my own. <laughs> right. Right. I'm doing DIY at mm. home. I'm quite happy. Mm. No one's there annoying me. Right. I go for my lunch later than everyone else, so I don't have to see people. He's like Quasimodo, <laughs> isn't he? He's like it, it, coming down when everyone else is not yeah. there. <laughs> no one's around. Uh, yeah. Suzanne! <laughs> <laughs> no, but then that's the problem. Suzanne then comes home. She's been sort of with people, so she comes in with loads of energy, and I'm going, just slow down. Stop going on, then she's breaking stuff, and that's probably the last what thing. What she's breaking? What? She's you know? heavy-handed, heavy-handed with all the stuff I've been fixing. She broke the shutters. What else did she break? Well, you couldn't have done a good job. I did do a good the job. The shutters? Where do you live? In the Old West? <laughs> what do you mean, the shutters? Some shutters on a window. She, she every, I every like it dark. <laughs> I don't want them to see me. What a mum. So what else has she broken? <laughs> She's always breaking stuff. The light switch outside. Heavy handed. Don't, uh, she forces things. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter how hard you hit it or how hard you pull it. Just tell me if it doesn't work and I'll sort it. That's what I do these days. I'm like a caretaker to Suzanne's house. I'm wandering around and replacing stuff that she's fucked up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So, uh, so she annoys you. She comes home. Oh. You've had a lovely day of peace on your own. So the only person that likes you and talks to you annoys you. Um... <laughs> and uh, when you're at home doing your DIY, I want to picture that scene. Well, that, OK, right. We've never done this before, right? But let's do a typical day. We've known each other now. What, how long have we known Carl? Nearly ten years. Feels like a long time, right? yeah. So, let's do a typical day in the life of Carl Pilkington. So, for my first question is, what time does Suzanne have to wake up? Does that annoy you? Does she have to get up earlier than you? Because she's got a proper job. The alarm goes off. Mm. Uh, what what time? time? About seven. That seems early. Uh, yeah, but I'm used to it now. OK. Uh, now, moment. you spring out of bed, make her a cup of tea, do you? No. Right. I let her get up, mess about. Um, By mess about, you mean get ready for work? <laughs> yeah. Right. She's not being quiet. So I, I'm then, I'm awake now. Right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean she's not being quiet? Well, she's just banging about, like I say, heavy-handed. Every, I don't know how she does it. It's just doors and stuff. Everything seems like the Hulk's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Bounding about. Just don't, don't be heavy-handed with it. When Even, like, pulling the curtains shut and stuff. Because it's not her who has to fix it. Do you know what I mean? When yeah. she's... Yanking at them and pulling them open, it's like just just pull them like that. I put them on a nice rail. Just pull them slowly like that. Right. It's things like that. This sounds like these jobs aren't done correctly. That's what they one, are done proper. No, because if you get like a you know if you get a bad pair of jeans and someone says oh you've ripped it, a good pair of jeans they won't rip. Boy. No, just look after. It doesn't matter if you got good jeans or poor jeans. Treat them the same. Mm. Look after your stuff. Mm. I've always been like that. I know. I've yeah. told you, from a young age, I didn't like people sitting on my bed after I'd made it. It was yeah. like, I've gone to the trouble, I've made it, there's no creases in it, don't sit on it. There's a chair there, use the chair. Sure, OK. Um, That's mental, but yeah. It's not mental. <laughs> it's, like, it's the behaviour of a It's psychopath. not mental. Yeah. So, Suzanne's so touching about the place. So, the, the doors, I mean, what's up with the doors? Do they squeak, or has the no. patch been done wrongly on no. them, or um, no, no, is it hasn't. the wrong no. wood or something? Someone's no, just heavy-handed. No. Right, OK. So yeah. then, she has a shower. Uh, if I have a shower, I like to go second because I've I'm, I've got the Mr. Muscle spray that she doesn't do properly. Right. Do you breakfast together? Just sit sit on the bed. Have some. Uh... Oh, I haven't even made the bed yet. Yeah, yeah, it's made. Well, don't sit on the bed if it's made. It's no, mad. I've sit on the chair. Down, I've calmed down. That's what I've said to her. As I'm getting older. Yeah. I'm easing a bit. Yeah, you're like Doris Day. So, um, sit on the bed, look out the window. Why are you having breakfast not sat on the bed? That yeah, makes sense to me. Sense Either to have me. breakfast in bed, just classic, the radio, or at the kitchen table. The radio's in there, and it's just kind of... So you get up, make breakfast, and go back and sit on the bed, because the radio's What's in there. What's going on with the crumbs, Rick? I don't know what the crumbs are doing, the but I don't know why they've got two radios. Crumbs. Hang on, you don't know what I'm having. I'm having cornflakes, no crumbs with cornflakes. No. no. But, so no. you know, two of you are sat there, 
Are you sat on opposite sides of the bed looking at each other, or are you both sat on the sides of the bed looking at the wall, listening to the radio, eating a bowl of cornflakes? Yeah. Well, you, are you sort of cross-legged on the bed, or your legs are down on the Just floor? Just down on the floor. Right. Fully clothed now, you've had the showers. Uh, I might have a t-shirt on and my undies. Okay. I haven't put my socks on yet, I don't like socks. I'd put them on last. Why don't you like socks? They just cut off your freedom. <laughs> I don't know how socks can cut off anything. It's all right if your feet are cold, they're nice to put on, but mm. I don't know, I, my socks are never that well fitting, so I don't really yeah. enjoy but wearing them. But why don't you get socks that fit yeah, you? Because I never buy socks, do they I? They should like be the same people. size as your shoes. Yeah, yeah I, little I, I let other people buy them for me and they're never quite right. But, hold on though, this is a rule you've imposed on yourself. <laughs> I'm only telling you because you've asked, I wasn't, I didn't come in here moaning about it. Socks saying... cut off your freedom. Never right. heard that before. Okay. I mean, Mandela said it. <laughs> well, yeah, never heard socks compared to the Berlin Wall. Yeah, I think, I think William Wallace said it as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, imagine that in Braveheart, just takes his socks off and goes, yeah. freedom! Yeah. I... Anyway, then I'll say, right, on your way to work, take the bin bag out. Right. She'll do that, and then I get on with whatever I've got to do that day. A little kiss on the cheek or the But why do you say... Pat on the head. Who <laughs> <laughs> pats who on the head? I'll just sort of rub the back of her head. There you go, see you later. Th then what? You're there, you've got your pants on, you've got your T-shirt on, well, you've you had listen your to the flags. news, you listen to what's being said on the radio, we'll have a little discussion about it. Sometimes she's in the mood for it, sometimes she'll go, don't worry about it. Right, what, now, what, what, to what would she say that to, then? What would you worry about if you heard on the news? I heard something about worms getting teeth. <laughs> <laughs> right. And she was kind of going, you know, you're not meant to worry about this new story, this war's going on stuff, you never listen to them. Do you remember the story of the worms with the teeth? Should we be alarmed ourselves? What was the information? It was just saying how, um, it was all about nature versus nurture thing. Right. And saying how worms that are growing up in a family where there's loads of food around. What do you mean growing up in a family? Just a family of worms in the soil. Right. They're going through the soil. If there's loads of food mm. for everyone, and they don't have to fight for food, right. they're quite happy, they don't have teeth. The ones, like the rough of worms, where there's not enough, it's like a massive family, the kids left, right and centre, but they haven't got the nutrients to feed them all. Mm. They fight against each other, and the ones, they're, they're growing teeth. You know. I, I didn't hear the new story, so I'm going out on a limb here. I don't think it was about a worm being maybe more working class and chavvy, though. With, like, big families. Look at that. They're a big family can't even feed them all. And then you've got middle class worms going, we've got enough food for everyone because we haven't uh, overbred. Do you know what people are like now? They've got researchers watching all sorts of stuff. Right. Keeping their eye on everything. When you don't have to worry about it. A worm with teeth, if they've got teeth or not, to me it is not a problem. Not a problem at all. I normally save a worm if I see one. So, well, in, a, in the rain, on a pavement. If I see it there, I go, someone's going to stand on that and I yeah. chuck it and I sort of watch it for a bit, see which way it was going, give it an helping hand. <laughs> see which way it was going, <laughs> like it had an aim. Well, see they which... do. No, they, they do though, don't they? They're always going somewhere. Yeah, he's going to the dentist. You can't tell, you don't know which stand it's heads on. Okay, so it's five past eight. Suzanne's gone out, you've rubbed the back of her head, she's took the rubbish out. You're there, pants, t shirt. No socks. No socks yet. What happens to the bowls of um, uh, X cornflakes? Where do they go? Have you got? A... I wash up. You wash up. That's the next thing you do, is it? Mm. Right. Okay. Now then, do you plan ahead for the day? Do you think to yourself, Carl, make a list of stuff to do, or do you just let it go? I you let just... it. I let it happen. Just I don't happen. like uh, the, the the worst thing for me mm. is planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I told I, you before. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't get anything done by planning, is what I you don't. Said. I don't like the idea of waking up going, I've got to do that today, because that's when you you don't look forward to doing the thing. Yep. Mm. Whereas I get up, I'm washing up. I'll look at a wall and I'll go, those tiles aren't very good. I'm going to rip them off. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, forget Idiot Abroad. Forget the Ricky Gervais show. Let's just have 24-7 Carl Cam. Just um, think how that would look. He gets up, he's... he's Suzanne leaves, we get him to, you know, uh, he looks at a wall. He we starts go... tearing his <laughs> off. Yeah. It looks like the behaviour of a psychopath, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, so this is what worries me, though. The fact that you're always doing DIY suggests that you didn't do a good job in the first place. No, Steve, yeah, I'm wrong? never, I, am, exactly I never, right ever there. do the same thing twice. There Once it's done, it's done. Mm. I do it right. I take me time. I'd get it done So right. this is other people's workmanship that you're undoing Definitely. and doing properly? OK, right. Now, the radio's in the bedroom, so you can't oh. listen to the radio when you're doing your work. I normally drag it through. 
You drag it through. How big is it? No, it's just a little clock radio thing. So it's plugged in. Yeah, it's, uh, plugged yeah, in, yeah. Okay. Then, uh... Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for um, meeting up with me and Steve and Suzanne being home between, I don't know, six o'clock at night and eight the next morning, you wouldn't talk to anyone, would you? Do you have any friends that you might talk to? Yeah, talk to some people on the phone. But then I soon get bored with that. Right. About mm. five minutes in, I realise I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you talking about that you got bored about? Oh, I can't remember because I got bored with yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was talking and I kind of thought, I hope he doesn't say what do you think of that in a minute because I wasn't listening. Right. So what's the point of having the conversation? I don't know. But hold on, I call you up. It's the, presumably the first phone call you get. It's the first Sometimes. phone call I make. Sometimes. I call you up and I go, what's going on, boy? Right? Yeah, but most of the time I don't tell you because you'll go, right, what are you doing doing DIY? Pay someone to do it. And we have to have all that e every day, the same <laughs> chat. <laughs> if I'm not doing DIY, I wouldn't be doing anything. And then I get grumpy. Suzanne comes home, she goes, what have you done today? And I go, nothing. And I get fed up then because I don't because feel like I've I'm done, worth anything. Because I work harder for your career than you do. I'm always doing stuff to try and get you to do stuff. I'm always trying to get you shows and things, and I'm always trying to get you to get out there and do something towards it. I don't want to do it. I've done it now. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. We did the programme. It goes out on the telly. Job done. Mm. If people want to watch it, they watch it. There's no point me cropping up on Loose Women, asking people <laughs> to tune into my programme. They either want to watch it or they don't. If they're watching Loose Women, I don't want them watching my programme. <laughs> There's a lot of crap on the telly, and that's why, in a way, people go, oh, it's amazing, isn't it, that you're on the telly? No, not really, because there's loads of garbage on there. Anyone can get on it. Yeah. Well, that's it's true, not though. special anymore. That's it used true. to be special in the 80s when there was, like, three channels, four channels. Now it's a doddle. But that's why you should make special TV. You should relish that. No, because they want some some sort of flumph telly, don't they? That's, that they don't have to, <laughs> they don't have to think about. Yeah, do, you like... mean, do you mean the programme The Flumps? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say flump. He said flump. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, now, this is, now, how are you spelling flump? It's F-L-U-M-F. -F. P-H flump. P-H flump. P-F. P-F? Oh, PF. flump. Okay. Pl flump telly. Yeah, flump. Flump telly. So, 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 so <laughs> what would be an example of flump telly? <laughs> What's flump telly? No, I don't want to go slagging stuff off, but no. I'm just saying I watch who less and less telly now. Flump telly? Who, who, who would be a typical who's, who's person? Typical, is it those, is it awful, those awful um, docu-soaps when people live their life like an open wound, saying, look, me fanny fell off. And then I haven't yeah. seen that. But yeah, <laughs> all that all that sort of stuff. I do honestly the amount of telly I watch now compared to a few years ago, it's non existent. <laughs> Suzanne comes home at night, I might watch a grand designs to mm. get some tips off it. Mm. Other than that So that's work. You count that as work, don't you? Research at, at least. least at least you learn something. So then we'll just sit and have a game of crib. Or... <laughs> You'd have been happy in the blitz, wouldn't you? You'd have been happy down in one of those subway stations. Oh, Suzanne, what? What? Chimney's gone. <laughs> oh, no, what was that? Doodlebug. <laughs> i better go up there. Oh, leave it. Well, it's mine. <laughs> oh, that's bloody heavy-handed, them Germans. They're bloody uh, heavy-handed. Well, let's go back a bit here. So you, you've done a bit of tiling. Good job. Please, job. you're halfway through. Sp spot a lunch around three-ish. Yeah. What do you do? Do you pop out for lunch? In a uh, it depends. Sometimes Suzanne, as I pat her on the head, she sometimes says, there's some ham in the fridge. And I'll go, all right. Um, <laughs> I love it. Like, this a little choreograph. If I, oh, I better pat her on the head. I don't know what I'm going to eat today. Yeah. Oh, uh, Carl thinks, like uh, Pavlovian conditioning. Yeah. Last time I patted her on the head, she told me about some food in the fridge. <laughs> Bye, love. Take the rubbish out. I'm in the fridge. Cheers. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, OK. So, I'll eat that. Um, now, just, just, I, the radio's on the whole time? Is there a, because I want to, I want to picture this, you're not working in silence, radio's on the whole time. That little squeaky radio that's sort of halfway in the doorway of the bedroom and the lounge or whatever, you've got the radio. And what station do you listen to? You listen to music? You listen Sometimes to speech? I listen to sort of speech stuff. Right. Sometimes I listen to music. What would be speech, like a, kind of one of those phone-in programmes? Uh, phone-ins do me head in a bit. Right. I like, uh, you know, reports on stuff. Uh, so you like to be informed as you go? Um, yeah, just so it gives me something to talk about, because if you're not with anyone all day, mm. your brain's not doing anything, is it? Mm, mm. Whereas me listening to them, it's like having someone in the room telling you stuff without you having to chat back. I Perfect. prefer that. I'm a, big, I'm a bigger listener than I'm a, a talker. Yeah. 
Whereas Perfect. these days, a lot of people are talking, but they're not listening. Mm. Perfect. So, Although you're not listening to actual humans like your friends when they call no, you up. because they're just mithering. Um, do you make sure that you get everything done and dusted before Suzanne comes home so she comes home to a spotless place? Yeah. And you, so she comes in, do you instantly show her the work you've done or do you just let her notice it for Sometimes herself? Sometimes I just leave it and see how long it takes for her to go. We've done that. Okay. Uh, and uh, if she doesn't notice it, are you annoyed or are you excited to tell her? Sometimes I forget. <laughs> <laughs> He does it again the what? next day. <laughs> yeah, that time looks a bit shoddy. <laughs> I should do that. Wow, sometimes you forget. Um, oh. And so is it, it's not the equivalent of when a lady comes to him and says, uh, oh, you've noticed me, hair, me new hairdo. Is it sort of the equivalent for you? She hasn't noticed. You don't get frustrated. Now, you do notice her new hairdos, don't you? Because you say you don't like them. So what does she say about your tiling? Uh, no, most of the stuff I do, she goes, that's good. But sometimes she'll go, why don't we just get someone in to do it? What, before or after? Well, it depends what it is. If it's something that, that's big and has been bothering her, but it's not bothering me, mm. I'm saying I'll sort it out. But what's sometimes. an example of something that's big that bothers her and not you? Right. Don't worry about it. Okay. She's going to get someone in. Well, no, I won't get someone in. Because, see, the thing is she got someone in once mm. when the oven blew up. <laughs> right? I said, right. leave it, I'll sort it, I'll look at it. No, you don't know what you're doing. Get someone in. No, let me have a look. No, get someone in. She calls someone up. They come round. The old £80 call-out charge business, straight mm. away. Mm. They pull it out. They go, oh, it was the fuse and the plug. Now, I could have sorted that out, but she didn't give me a chance. So now it's good now, because I've got that on the old back burner. So every time she says, let's call someone out, I'll go, oven. Because it doesn't remind it. <laughs> so I'm glad in a way that she did. But so now she just leaves it. She doesn't interfere. No, Carl, do you... Carl, Carl, I've got terrible pains. Oven. <laughs> I normally speak to my mum and dad at some point every day. Really? Do you? Every day you speak to your mum and dad? Yeah. Could you take us through a typical conversation with your dad? He calls up. Um, what does he say? What does he say? He said, I've just been out, got your mum some medicine. Well, every time he calls, he's no, been I'm out. I'm just telling getting... you the last call. Out. Oh, I see. Sorry. Right. Um, what's the weather like? And then my mum might get on. And um, okay, okay, what's she got to say? Forward to this. She just tells me a bit of it. She'd like, what was it the other day? She said, "Oh, have you seen them tablets? That are food." <laughs> She's just so like you. She's just like you. Oh God, what is she a fucking astronaut? <laughs> have you seen them tablets? What are food? Oh, <laughs> Go on, God. what other are like food? Uh, no, that's what it is. It's like the spaceman food. They've come out and we're just chatting about them. She's saying, oh... Really, you know. they've come out? Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we live in a busy world and everything. And mm. people haven't got time to have a proper lunch. So, you have a call, like a scintillating phone conversation like this every day with your parents. Yeah. And does she always try to find a piece of new information she thinks might interest you? That's sweet, day? though. That's yeah, sweet that he absolutely. talks to his parents every day. So, you've spoken to your mum and dad. You've changed the tiles. Suzanne comes in. The kitchen's all clean, ready for us to make the tea. Ready okay. for her to make the tea, even though you've been... I know you've been tiling, but that was a sort of... That was a job you gave yourself. You didn't have to do it. Mm. No, but I don't do cooking. She knows that. This this isn't even a discussion. Right. She knows... What are you having tonight? Uh, scampi. So she'll do all that. I'll eat it. And, sorry, don't we just rewind for a second? I'll so... eat it. <laughs> He's listing it in his day's work. I'll eat it. Uh, I say, I've eaten that. She goes, thank you. <laughs> you go, oven. <laughs> OK, let's act it out, yeah. OK? You've just cleaned up, right? The last bit there, you look back. Them tiles look good. You look at the clock. Right, uh, vacuuming up, cleaning up all the mess. Mm. Uh, my phone's going. Who's that? Suzanne. All right? Yeah, coming home. All right, then. See you in a bit. She'll go. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put the kettle on, or at least fill it, ready, because mm. she normally calls again. <laughs> and, what do you mean, uh, she calls again? What? She calls again when she's out of the tube. Let's do it, let's hear it, what's going on? All right, you out of the tube, yeah, do you want a cup of tea, yeah, all right, see you in a minute. Sometimes I'll say I'll get us a little treat when you come out of the tube, yeah. um, so she'll get me, you know, a bounty or something to go with a cup of tea. Do you Coconut. specify that when you say get me a treat? She says, well, well what? Sometimes you have a Mars bar, well, sometimes you have a bounty. No, that's, that's enough for me. I'll go, I'll, when, when she comes in, it's a talking topic, isn't it? What have you got me? Topic? <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that gets you a topic. You know, it's, it's, it's something to chat about, isn't it? 
Right, OK. Well, it's it's a jab. So, uh, has there ever been a time... Sorry, I've just got to get this straight, Steve. Sorry, Rick, I just wanted to say... Could, could you imagine you and I having a conversation about what chocolate bar you have brought me? Okay. What did you get me, Rick? Uh, I've got your bounty, is that Thanks, right? mate. That's as long as that conversation can possibly yeah, go. You're talking it. about it, it's a talking point. Yeah, so what happens? So what was the last time there was a discussion about what she bought you? Did she ever bring you a bounty and you go, oh, I was really hoping for a Mars bar? Um, I think the last time she got a bounty, I sort of said, oh, they do a three-pack now. Do you know how they just have two bars? They do a three-one. Right, what did she say? She said, do they? Did <laughs> she they said, I want out of this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's how she comes through. Took a coat off, I'll go, oh... She'll go, what, are we having scampi still or have you gone off the idea? And then I'll go, oh, you know, we should get them tablets my mum's been talking about. She goes, what tablets? I go, the food. So see how it's all coming together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like that, and that's... that's what does she say to the idea of now living on tablets instead of um, having some scampi and chips when she comes home after a hard day's work? What does she, she say to that? She just goes, all oh, right. Mm. <laughs> she says, oh, right. Yeah. So, so this important information which you're imparting that you've gotten during the day, her response to that is, oh, right. Yeah. So, and then I'll just, I'll get her attention at some point. I'll say there's worms with teeth. <laughs> I'm going to bring out the good big guns now. Well, imagine. Right. All right, she's ignoring me. OK, wait for this. Remember Suzanne, I see you, you're ignoring me. Yeah. Worms with teeth. Oh, God. Amazing. Oh, God. So what does she say to worms have teeth? Uh, I can't remember. She just, just sort of said, oh, have you got the facts right? I said, yeah. That's, that's kind of it. And she'll either go, all right, or she'll... Uh, I mean, it's pretty rare that it's anything more than that. <laughs> So it's not a conversation, really. It's, no. Because the response twice now has been, oh, right. What happens next? Take us through. I'll sort of say, you got anything to report? Anything gone on today? Mm -hmm. And she knows it's, it's a sort of phase off again. It's like a phone call. She'll go, oh, so-and-so's leaving or whatever, and I don't know these people. Mm. And I'm not that interested. Mm. And she senses that. Yeah. Yep. Um... So she'll go, oh, have you paid the insurance? And I go, no, I forgot. And she'll go, I told you to do that. I said, yeah, but I've been doing the tiling. She's going, yeah, but you didn't, weren't meant to do the tiling. I should sort the insurance out on the washer, because the washer keeps breaking. Um, and she won't let me fix it, even though I know what it was. It was a heating element. I said, I know, I know how to fix that. Uh, then have a game of crib. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it's God! It's like being in an old people's home. I know. And um, you've, you've had a lovely game of crib with Suzanne, because, you know, the magic's still there. And uh, what time do you hit the sack? <sighs> Don't know, about 11. Do you go to bed at the same time? Yeah. So that's it, yeah, that's so, the day. Really. Well, hang on, we haven't finished yet. So, y any conversation before bed? Uh, depends if the radio's on. I might say, look, here's that story about the worm. Yeah. Mm. And then she'll go, yeah, but look, it hasn't got teeth. It's had this, that and the other, and I'll go, oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot. Good night. That's the end of that. Another really. day closer to death. The idea of Englishness and England, it's quite a vague term, isn't it? It's, you can play loose and fast with it. I mean, for instance, I was uh, looking at some quotes about England and John Major, former Prime Minister, he typified England as being a place of long shadows on county cricket grounds, warm beer, invincible green suburbs, dog lovers and old maids bicycling through the morning mist. Very yeah. specific vision of England. But he never came to the estate that <laughs> I was born on. Sure. Carl was, you know what I mean? So, what is your typical image of an Englishman? Now? If I had to draw it for an alien, yeah. um, he'd be uh, quite squat, um, quite sturdy, sort of no neck, um, hairy. Are you just thinking of yourself? Do you know what? I, I, it would be my build with Carl's head. Really? And no neck, yeah. I think he's sort of balding and unshaven, and uh, he's like a shaved caveman. I think he's he's tough, he'd have tats, he'd, he'd eat like a dog. It's the bulldog breed. It is the bulldog breed. I am thinking of the bulldog breed, yeah. See, now my image of an Englishman is, is essentially that cliched one. It is, I think, f Hugh Grant. So you're modern, you're straight away well, modern now. I would say it's either mixed between Hugh Grant and Roger Moore when he was James Bond. 
You see, you know that's I mean? another that's another small percentage of Englishness that sort of annoys me. There's people that think they're James Bond. They think they can buy a suit and read GQ, and they're suave and sophisticated, and they get cars they can't afford. All they do is work in a bank, come home, and flick through GQ at the adverts, looking at people in with wearing watches and aftershave. Who wears aftershave? Do you wear aftershave, Carl? Um, normally, it's, it, aftershave is the sort of thing I let other people buy me. It's like underpants. Underpants, tea towels, and sort of aftershave and that. <laughs> other people buy me. Who's buying you tea towels? My mum. Right, and okay. Every time she turns up, she's got Brilla pads and stuff. <laughs> I've got loads of them. <laughs> I keep saying to her, I don't need any of this, but she always brings a box full of stuff. Brilla pads, tea towels, underpants. The underpant size hasn't gone up since I was 14. <laughs> But that's, I can rely on her for that. So do you not have anything in your life which you would think of as being gentlemanly? Do you ever dress smartly? What about suits? I bought one suit at the time when you invited me to the BAFTAs. That's the only suit. I think I wore it for one other thing. I haven't wore it since. I don't like, I don't feel comfortable, it's not me. But don't you go to a wedding? That'd be a lovely advert, wouldn't it? Him with a suit on going, I haven't wore it since. <laughs> Carl Pilkington hasn't wore it since. <laughs> I don't you go to, to, be to a wedding. No, I don't like going to them. I agree. I mean, even though you know them, they don't give you any time when you're there, do they? They just sort of, they don't know whether you're there or not. They're on cloud nine. They don't know who's around. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you don't need it's to all, be there. With them, on a wedding day, it's all me, 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 isn't it? Well, firstly, I'm annoyed about the wedding list. I don't know when that's come along, because I don't know why I can't just bring maybe something I've made at home. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Why has there got to be a list of stuff? What bride, what newly married bride doesn't want a pair of homemade clogs? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? I've, well, but the saying that, I think people very much appreciate you being at their wedding. No, they don't. They do. I've... They remember if you were there. No, they don't. They do. They don't. You don't get invited to weddings because you ain't got any mates. No, I have. I've got, I know enough people. Everyone's getting married. But it's, they're always in the middle of nowhere. That, that, that annoys me when people say, come to our wedding. Yeah, fun away. We're having Greece. Yeah. Well, the thing that drives me insane when you do go is when they put you on a table with people you don't know. Well, I've got it. all my mates there and they put, what, well, because uh, i got to mingle with some people. I don't care. I don't need these people. But that's what people. I'm not good at, I talking to people friends. once. Talking to people who you don't know. No. What, what, what sort of I... stuff would you make conversation about at a wedding? Uh, I'd probably say, oh, first of all, how do you know them? Mm. How do you know the people getting married? Yeah. And then, like, you know, do you think it'll last? <laughs> <laughs> imagine getting... Imagine That's inviting Carl Pilking to do it and going, well, where should we put him? Oh, I don't know. Is there a, is there a table for one? Oh, just... You've got a table with the kids. Imagine being stuck with Carl Pilkington at a wedding. Yeah, what else? So you've asked them, do you think it'll last? They've gone, I'm sorry? Who are you? Oh, Carl Pilkington from Manchester. Right, yes, we think it'll last. What else would you ask? So what's your next? Uh... The last wedding I went to, it's going back a couple of years, but everyone seems a bit snidey. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got a mixture of families there, haven't you? Yeah. And none of them really like each other. No. And I got stuck with an old fella who had a flatulence problem. <laughs> that sounds fun. And then he went on to say, it doesn't matter, the suit's hired. And then it's just kind of like... <laughs> I'm going to die! I, I love just don't that! Like I love it. He's basically saying at a wedding, it doesn't matter if I shit myself. <laughs> Maybe it's that thing that I don't appreciate what I've got, but to me, being English isn't anything that great. Really? Why not? Because uh, it's just what I've been dealt with. If you could be any nationality, what would you be and why? Um, probably be Italian. Okay. Why? Well, just. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of it. I like it. Italians are all right. Where would you live? Rome? Prob I probably wouldn't want to be in, in the middle of Rome. It's too much hassle. Have you been to Rome? Yeah, it's nice to visit and stuff. Yeah. It's good. A lot of old stuff. Why have you chosen Italy? I'm interested to know why of all the countries you've chosen Italy. I was a latecomer to pasta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one year round. I like it now. It's like one of my favourite things I have. Um, which there isn't really anything like that in England. That even though well, it's... Well, except pasta. Pasta's no, but exactly it's, like it. Yeah, no, but we've it's got, not. We've got pasta. It's we? not ours, though, is it? And we no, don't know how to eat it. What do you mean we don't know how to eat we, it? We do it all wrong. You stick, <laughs> you stick it up your arse again. Look at me. I know how to fucking eat it. No, but what I mean is, if if you saw a proper Italian, and they saw what we did to pasta, 
they would not be happy. What are we doing wrong? Tell me what we're doing wrong. Well, I don't know that, otherwise we wouldn't be doing well, it wrong. How do you know we're doing it wrong? You know I've just heard we do it wrong. It's like how we we have the coffee at all the wrong times. I ordered a cappuccino somewhere, and the Italian fella said you shouldn't be having that now. It's a breakfast coffee. Yeah, it is, yeah. Before 12 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. but I was having it at like quarter to 11 at night. Oh, wow. Like well, well that's absurd. Coffee. Are you going to get to sleep with a lovely cup of coffee? Yeah, that's not well, a good sleep one. anyway. You yeah. shouldn't drink coffee anyway at night. Full stop. So, hang on. So, you love pasta, but you're not eating it right. So, you'd like to be Italian in order to be able to eat pasta correctly. Even though you enjoy the pasta, you What eat. do you feel being Italian uh, is, and what, what's it's attracted just, it's to being... It's just very sort of, uh, it's a relaxed lifestyle. Whenever you go to Italy, everyone's outside a cafe. It doesn't matter what sort of person Carl, you are. that's all you do now with your spare time, yes, is outside a cafe. But they get more respect over there for Why? You. It's, it's like, it's okay to do that. There's older people sat outside cafes who do nothing. I love just the fact that he wants to be retired. Italian so he can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than he does now sit outside a cafe. No, but everyone's rushing about here. People have, like, colder coffee. They have frappuccinos here because they haven't got time to have a hot coffee. It's like they've got a coffee with ice and so I can neck it. Get down my neck and get on with my day. Relax, enjoy your coffee. I don't understand the rush. But the reason you enjoy Italy is because when you were there, you're on holiday. That's why you're able to chill out and no, relax. No. When you say that it's old people, old people sat in some little Sicilian village. Of course, they they got no money. <laughs> Here, I went to the Salvation Army. Right. Why? Because it's nice. What do you mean? You get you get you can get toast and a cup of tea for a pound. Go, <laughs> oh, you little skinflint. That's just, that That should be the going rate, Steve. I'm surprised I haven't seen you in there, to be honest. <laughs> but the thing is... Where is now, it? Now, just near Camden. What is it? Is it, like, uh, old people? A lot of old people, mainly old people. Um, and this is what I'm saying. These are people who are old and they sat in a cafe. But they don't get any respect. People are walking past and they don't want to go in. The way you reacted when I said I was in the Salvation Army. That's the reaction they get. Yet an old Italian person, they looked after better. Well, it's certainly true they look after their older families, don't right. they? Do and that's all them. I'm saying, whereas... I mean, it's a lovely place, Salvation Army. Every old fella in there's got a tie on. Yeah. They make an effort. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what I like about Italians and that. There's a, there's a lot of So you respect. want to be Italian because when you're old, you can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than you do here. Yeah, look at the old people in this country. They never look happy, do they, really? Most of the time, when you see them walking around, they, get, they go to pot. No one's keeping an eye on them. Well, it's an important thing, isn't it? That, that um, My uh, my mum, this is when she was about 60, 65, uh, there was a, a neighbour who was, uh, like, you know, 85, 90, and my mum used to go around there every day. Do you want any shopping? Do it, right? But I remember calling her once, and... Uh, She's going back, I said, what are we doing? She went, oh, I've been around so-and-so. So I went, all oh, right. She went, oh, she won't die, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's helping yeah, her, but she's yeah, thinking yeah, this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 well, that's the problem, you know. If you if you get pally with an old person, yeah. then you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, isn't it? You, you, you meet an old, you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start um, popping in is sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do if you're... It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just the ones on, on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> <laughs> Can you... you could just hear her coming. <laughs> Which was weird. Aren't you? Now you've brought up weird people. There Go was on. a fella called Shorts Man. Right? <laughs> it's so pedestrian! <laughs> oh, I love that. Shorts Man wore some shorts? Now, now what I like, yeah, he did, but they were, they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. What do you mean? They were just, you know, like shorts now for blokes, yeah. they go up to your knees, don't they? There's no chance, there's no accident happening there. There's go nothing going to pop out. Yeah. No. But shorts, man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. And he used to walk with, with big strides to sort of help the chance along. So that he what? knew, with the big strides and the short shorts, yeah. they were going to pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why Everyone did get the shorts? Just because it was, it was like, it was but like, it was like playing Buckaroo. <laughs> it was like, when are they going to pop out? But what? <laughs> It's just what happened. So, right, but Shorts Man, 
<laughs> so he was an exhibitionist. He liked he mostly what people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah. yeah. And they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan. <laughs> now the thing is. What, what we like in England, I think we like that. We like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah, yeah. eccentric's very... That's very British, eccentric, yeah. And, and, yeah. I, and I, I'm glad I grew up round there with all them people. So am interesting. I. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a big difference, Carl, between the, the Englishman of year, yesteryear who didn't complain? I mean, he just got on with things. He might have whinged about the weather and the like. Um, but he just got on with things. He you carried know. an umbrella. Yeah. He Whereas nowadays anything. people are getting their Prozac and their antidepressants. Someone is going into therapy. Yeah. He kept out of stuff as well. Why are we getting involved now in everything? Thoughts on that, Carl? Uh, it's news now, isn't it? Sometimes I think, don't tell me. Don't want to know. Just get on with it. Whoever's job that is, get on with it. Yeah. Why am I being told about it? When I've got a problem in my job, no one else knows. No, no. one helps me out and goes, well, I've got an opinion for him. No. This might help him. No one helps me. But I'm being bombarded by everyone else's asshole. They love talking, actually. That's what the English do. Talking, but they never finalise it. They love just being in the meeting room, talking, saying, yeah, we could do this, we could do that. I'm the only one in that room not getting paid. Everyone else is on a wage. I'm there looking at me watch, thinking, right, I've been here for an hour, nothing's been sorted. They're looking, thinking we can drag this out for another half hour, gets to lunch. That's what annoys me. They're all sat there, just pushing bullshit around the room like dung beetles. <laughs> Sick of it, and that's what the English do. <laughs> and it's a shame because I don't think we used to be like that. I wish everybody just sort of kept to themselves more, like you know, certain animals do. They just get on with it. It's like Love an old-fashioned way. What animals keep well, any, themselves? Any animals keep themselves themselves. Like what? I've said uh, loads of things. What, what, keeps, what animals keep themselves? Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they keep themselves? No, they just uh, when, whenever you see them and sort of wandering about a roadside, they're on their own. Right. They're, not, they're not sort of what are they doing? in pairs. I don't know. Most of the time they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen more dead badgers than alive ones. I've never seen a live badger. <laughs> I don't it's know that's... what his point is. So that's is. why they're one alone and two getting on with it. I love it. Most I of the time. That. It started off as some kind of poetic <laughs> analogy. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Most of the time. I just. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Um, I like this thing of the, the, the Englishman I knew growing up. Um, was uh, you had to, when you hit a certain age, when you hit, like, manhood or puberty or whatever, 13, 14, 15, you had to start showing your metal. You had to be tough. I'm, I remember, right, when I first started going to pubs, right, so I'm, I don't know, say 18, you walk into a toilet, the urinals, and the first thing everyone did was fart and gob. <laughs> yeah. That was it, right? Yeah, if yeah. you couldn't do that, then, uh, you know, you'd get funny looks. You know, you go in the rhino and they'd look at you and go, oh, sorry. It was all about um, being a man, <sighs> you know. I think wearing glasses makes you slightly exempt from that. It's like you don't have to... People mm. automatically dissociate. It's like if I was in prison, I wouldn't have to do that because I'd just be the professor. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, or brains. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, they would, I wouldn't need to be part the... of that. I'm never a threat because I never look like I'm going to be a tough guy. So consequently, I live in this sort of parallel stratosphere where I haven't got a piss and gob. Yeah. Has that got more popular? Yes. Has it? Yeah. There's a lot of people doing it in the streets now. Really? It's not like in, avoiding... Not in Hampstead. It still is, you know. When I walk, walk The only in, person gobbing in Hampstead is me. Jane says, don't gob. People are looking. Well, it is. It's your trail that I'm seeing then. <laughs> it's like a load of sort of washed up jellyfish in London. Just big blobs of it. I, I mean, I don't know how they're coughing this stuff up. I mean, they shouldn't still be alive. Some of them have, like, organs in them. It's just big lumps of stuff. I mean, that list of idyllic, antiquated England of, uh, you know, tea and cakes and cricket, I mean, is, is valid. But I think the things that sum up Englishness, I mean, talking of the weather, I think drinking, uh, war... We love a ruck. Yeah. We've built on war. We're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. Talking of the um, English sense of fair play and war, when um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. They said it was unchristian. So our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill and it was shooting these bolts and they could reload quick. And uh, versus our 
our bone. What do you think of that? What do you think of going, oh, it's cheating, we won't use it, but having a disadvantage? That's honour, isn't it? But uh, what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. Someone comes along, and goes, don't worry about that. Here's a crossbow. Just pop it in, put it back. <laughs> Deadly. Deadly, quick. Anyone can use it. So now you've got anyone with a crossbow killing people. Women, children. Anyone can use it. So the Europeans, they're going crazy. But we did we resisted it because we thought it was, you know, unchristian and cheating to kill without skill. What do you think of that? But where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was like sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family. That's that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. You new bow and arrow from Ronco. But what what do you think the problem yeah, is? But you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The I don't, objective I don't is think to kill the place. enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all up to about someone cheating or having a better Ooh. system. Really? You think all fair in love and war? Do you? Yeah, definitely. Right, but it's just about rules, isn't it? No, not in a war, there isn't rules. What's extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the, you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, and that's the one they had a, a knockabout, so didn't they, to, you know, a game of football. In no man's land, yeah. Christmas Day. But who, who took a football there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I was on the front line, I would not be getting out the rule book. I can tell you that much. I'd be going mental. Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just going to be like Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? I'm just going to go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Which rules would you repeal that already exist, that you don't like? Uh. It's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> <laughs> so fly tipping, you'd like to see more fly what, tipping. What, what just, do you mean? This is something so personal, he's fed up, he had to take something. No, it's, okay. it's just that they used to put stuff outside the house. And just like, you had mattresses, you had sideboards, uh, sewing machines. The thing is, it was, it was a good way of recycling. Now, they say recycle, but we're not recycling, it's just being put in a bin. I'm saying if you've got old furniture, you should be allowed to leave it outside your house without the council going, move that, it's dangerous, someone's going to trip over it. Mm. Well, if they right. trip over it, it should have been looking where they're going. Well, what if they're blind? What? What if they're blind? That's why you don't leave things out in the pavement, because blind people will fall over and smack their face in. No, because I'm, I'm leaving it, I'm not leaving it on the, on the pavement. What did you say you were? Where are you leaving it? Sort of outside the house. Where are you leaving it, Carl? You haven't established where you're leaving this yet. Because so far, a blind person's fallen over and broken his nose. I've never seen a blind teeth. person trip over anything. You've never seen a blind person trip over anything? Definitely not. They're, they're better on the feet than some people, because they're more cautious, aren't they? So... It'd make it more fun for them, if anything. Why can't you just have this stuff collected by a second-hand shop, or... Because they won't, they don't come, Steve. Honestly, they, they don't. They I've, I've called up people, and they're saying, yeah, we'll be there in an hour, and I say, right, I'm gonna put it out on the street, and are you gonna come and get it? Yeah, we'll be there. An hour passes by. They haven't been. Suddenly, the council goes over the <laughs> On the floor, bloodied noses. And the council said, I call them up, do you want to shift it? Well, we might, but don't know when. Well, it's outside the house now. Well, you can't leave it there. It's your responsibility. You'll have to stay with it. Suddenly, I'm wasting time sat outside the house with rubbish that someone else might want. But you're not allowed to leave there because a blind person might come along. What's the dog doing? <laughs> Do you make of St. George, the patron saint? What's your take on that? Is he the one who killed the dragon? Right. Tell us the story. It was a dragon problem. Um, must have been in England. Right. Um, George took it on. He took on the job. He was like a rent-a-kill. 
Uh, he came out. The interesting thing with him is, right, he was a hero then. I honestly think if he did that now, there'd be an uproar. Because it's the last, it's the last dragon. It's the same way we try to save the panda and all that now. If he came out and said, I've done it, and they've done them what? They've just killed the last dragon. They'd, they'd go mental. There'd be marches. Idiot, bloody idiot. <laughs> and that's what's interesting. But it was it was going around burning people. Doesn't matter, we should have we shouldn't have killed the last one. It's the last one. And that's no, what we'd be they, like. They, you say they, you should have saved it, you should have captured it and put it in a cage so we can all look at it. There's no stuff. point, it couldn't have bred anyway, it was the last one. Was it definitely the last one? <laughs> well, you were saying it was the last one. I'm not bothered either way. Whoa. Hang on, what? To Sorry, me, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you think that there were dragons? Well, what are we celebrating then? Well, it could be a metaphor, a dragon slayer. It could be um, a, a bad thing amongst us. It could be a foreign threat. It could well, be things that threaten. Our, it could be anything. It could. It's not. It's not to be taken literally, is but it? But the real legend of George was that he was a figure who uh, stood up for Christianity. Doesn't Have you ever done anything brave? There was a kid at school who used to have epileptic fits a lot, and uh, the teacher used to always say, if it happens, grab his tongue. And I sort of had a go at that one. His tongue. His tongue? Yeah. What, it was, what, what, what did he have a tongue for? To pick stuff up? What do you mean, a tongue? His tongue in his mouth. Oh, his tongue. Oh, his tongue. Yeah. Right, go on. And they used to say, if he, if, he starts, if he starts doing it, uh, grab his tongue and that. Mm. And, and I sort of had a go at that once. And it was wasn't nice. Well, how did you grab it? Well, you grab his tongue, did you? Well, I tried to. It's like grabbing a slug. <laughs> and plus, his mouth's going up and down. Like you think he's going to have me handy. So you sort of do that thing where you go. So you were fight, you were trying to grab hold of a kid's tongue, yeah? And he was. He's trying... throwing himself all all over the place. It was in a physics lesson. I sort of had a go, and then I thought this isn't happening. So I just sort of kept putting my hand in, like I'm having a go. But I, I, in the head, I was going, I'm not going to get hold of it. What you could have used is a pair of tongs. Well, firstly, I don't see why this is brave. Uh, kids having an epileptic, epileptic fit and you're just supposed to help them out. I don't know why that's bravery, but even given that, the fact that you were thinking more about yourself in that situation than this other kid. You were thinking, I'll make it look like I'm helping, but I'm not really. And yet this is kid having well, an epileptic fit. Well, I did, I did fit. at the beginning, doesn't I tried. Doesn't that sum you up, Carl? Selfish. No, no, it doesn't. Because I, I, I didn't, no one else was having a go. At least I did try and grab it you at one point. You weren't doing anything. You were just making it look like you were. He's, have you ever tried to grab a tongue? <laughs> it's like chasing a, a chicken. <laughs> it's murder. And after a while, it wears you out. And it was weird anyway, because it, it was like... <laughs> what was he doing it for? I don't know. Like, wearing him out after hours of chasing love, his kid's tongue. I love the idea of you ever tried grabbing a tongue. It's a, it's a valid question. I love that he's annoyed. He's annoyed that this what poor kid's ever your technique? It. Were you trying to grab it? Just, sort of just like... with your thumb and your what's it thing? Like, like, yeah. a, like a pincher thing. Yeah. But it was because his mouth's going down and. and was he, he shouting or just. No, just throwing himself around. So that's your one attempt at bravery. Well, hang on a minute. Let me just think. It's trying to grab else. a tongue. There was a time you were chased by a bee and you scored a goal. I that, about that. That, that. that isn't really brave, is it? As you, were, as you were running away from a bee and the ball happened to hit your foot and go in. That kind of bravery. I love it when he goes up to the pearly gates and he goes, well, you know, if you don't need to courage. Uh, I pretended to grab a tongue. <laughs> a what? A tongue. A tongue, yeah. Uh, got chased by a bee, scored a goal. It doesn't count as brave at all. Law and order. I'm not that interested in it, to be honest. What do you mean? I've got no interest in law and order whatsoever. It's not part of my life. <laughs> That's the problem. You keep picking topics that don't buzz me. <laughs> of course they do. They don't. Well, not let's talk interested. about this. Let's talk about this. You'll be your man quite obsessed with law and order. The law and order is basically to protect the innocent, isn't it? When someone wrongs us, we want justice. It's fundamental. And you do. You were sitting in your old flat in London, phoning me every day that you wanted to go downstairs and smack their heads in for being late and shouting around and being drunk. And you could hear it. You wanted some justice. Yeah, but nothing would have happened if I'd have called someone up and said there's people doing noise pollution. But you are you are concerned with law and order. No, you but wanted no your point. rights and oh, you ended up moving. Yeah, so I shouldn't have to move because of some noisy people. No, you shouldn't. But I'm saying, you were stressed. No one cares, though. And you wanted justice, but you, c you thought you couldn't get justice, so you moved away. Yeah, so I dealt with it in my way. Yeah. I right. hated them. Right. Because they didn't care about anyone else. Exactly. But the police wouldn't get involved. There's other people who live around there who had to put up with it. No one cared. So what did it feel like every night when you were trying to watch telly, and it's hot and you've got the window open, or...? 
Yeah, you could just hear stuff, and like, you know, it's it's that thing of you get a lot of tourists in London, so they're talking. It's not even as if you can listen in to what they're saying and have a have a view on their opinion because they're talking. Is that, so would you that be entertaining for you? Well, yeah, because if you can hear what people are saying, you go, oh, yeah, that's Switch a good point. off. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a good know, point. I don't want to hear anyone talking. But isn't it your own fault for living in central London? Well, not really, because it wasn't always like that. I'd been there years, and then all of a sudden, you know, good fellas turn up. <laughs> they sat down there making a racket. What can you say to them? You call down, they can't hear the phone ringing. But it's louder, I think it is louder abroad than it is here. Whenever I go away on holiday, I always notice that it's always a couple of decibels higher. Really? Always. Like, the sound of bird noises and that are louder abroad. <laughs> Because they're trying to get a nut above the noise of the noisy people. No, that's not true. They are. When I was in... Where was I? Menorca or something. It was like lying there. If it wasn't a noisy local, it was the people in the villa next door. If it's not them, they suddenly collected the bottles from the bottle bank. That's a nice noise when, you, when you're just relaxing. The bottle bank. Pop that there where the villa is. So that was a racket. There was always some... There was just... So much noise. Animals, oh. creatures. You can't, you can't escape. It's the one thing you can't escape, noise. Your ears never turn off. No. <laughs> They're always there. But I've told you before, wear earplugs if you have to. I don't like it. But he, doesn't like, he, can, he says he can hear the sound of his own art. <laughs> well, there's always a sound. Like your eyes, you can close them. My eyes close all the time. And if, if, if I don't like the look blinking. of something... Yeah. No, but yeah. if I don't like the look of something, they, they close before even I've thought about if I want to see it or not. <laughs> What do, you think? what do you mean exactly? I just mean if, if I see something on the telly or like one of those casualty programmes or something, yeah. it's like my eyes know that I'm not going to like the look of it. But no, 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 no. So no, they you're... close no, no, quicker. No, 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 no. My ears, they, oh. they seem to be interested in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not. <laughs> what, what I mean is you can't close your ears. Yeah, you that's can't. what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. You can't, you can never... So that's no, why I, I love the idea that your eyes are closing when you... Were, oh, well, I was watching that. Yeah, what are you what doing, eyes? Have your eyes, have your no, eyes I mean, ever closed something that you've got... No, they're not going to get it right. Your eyes aren't making any decisions. Right. You're making decisions. You turn away because you don't like seeing something. You don't turn away and then you're going... What was that? And your eyes go, you don't want to know. <laughs> you do not know. Wanna, you don't know. I'm just right. saying, anyway. Mm, lovely pair of tits here. Oh, no. <laughs> I just mean, <sighs> noise pollution, it's the, it's the one thing you can't escape. But the thing about law and order is, um, you don't have to take it. You can combat being wronged. It's not just punishment or retribution. It's justice. You want to know that you're valued. Uh. You know, it is, well, this is a big issue, isn't it, Rick? It's, it's, you know, is one life more important than another? If you've transgressed in a terrible way, um, you've murdered or raped, whatever, and oh, so I'm going to put you to death. Well, this is an interesting argument, isn't it? Whether capital punishment. I, I don't agree with execution. Carl, where do you stand on the tricky issue of capital punishment? You've given it some serious thought, I imagine. Um, so what, you're asking me, like, should it be... Should he, should he be on death row? Well, should should someone flip the switch, send him to his death in the electric chair? Um. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was the that. least considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw a little bit of flicker behind the eyes. I don't know what. Well, just take us through the mental process that you that you arrived at the yes with. There, so you, you've been, no, I remember that because there was a, quite a brief gap there. I just was thinking, it's not a nice job if you work in there and you've got to flick the switch, right? But I was wondering if, if it's possible to just do it so it's linked up to someone's switch. <laughs> what do you mean? When they put the lights on something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like sometime tonight when the sun goes down and people start putting the lights on in their house, it could happen, but we don't know what household they might be away on holiday. So you might get an extra two weeks. <laughs> but at least that way. Because for me... Well, the so, but what my point is, you do agree that someone should be put to death for a terrible crime, do you? You've got to have something there to stop them people who, who don't care, haven't you? Nature's done it in a way with bees. He's gone, we'll give you a weapon, but if you use it, you die. And that's like the bee. Well, so yeah. they're worried they're going to go, well, I'm that's not going to do it. We do, won't we? We have... We have people saying, one, you can't do that. That's, that's step one. Here's the law. Don't yeah, do it. Well, there's a lot of people Two. who go, I'm not bothered about the law. I'm not bothered about annoying people. 
Yeah, that's so true. So for them, at the end of the scale, you've got the chair and you stick the wires on their head and we'll fry your head. Oh. And they go, oh, God, I don't want that. Uh, I, I think a lot of those crimes, the deterrent isn't relevant. You know, things like armed robbery, maybe, where it's a risk, what can I get versus what my crime may be. Maybe then it might be a deterrent. But then, of course, if you start to get a capital punishment for crimes that aren't murdering someone, then th that thing brings in you might as well murder them but because then you've got more chance of getting away with it. So it's very delicate what you make people be killed for. Um, you've made a, a, an interesting and reasoned argument there, Rick. I'm looking forward to, to hearing the riposte. Right. When I was younger, I used to nick Mars bars. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, I did that then, and I, and I knew that even if I get caught, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. It's not gonna, I'm not going to go to prison over that. But it was worth nicking because the Mars bar, they were like 45 pence. Sure. Um, a Mars bar was a proper treat. Mm. There's a lot going on in there. A lot of yeah. chocolate, a lot of caramel. Yeah. Like, like I say, 45 pence. Yeah. So. To so, me. so that was like an advert that went wrong just at the end. <laughs> they started off good, they go, this bar's good, he's like, you're going there. Mars bar's a lot in it, it's like, oh, good, keep going, yeah, it's got, it's got caramel, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's 45 pence, which is too fucking much, so fucking naked, you're gone. But when I was younger, that was worth a risk. Because I knew that I'd be getting something worth 45 pence yeah. for free. You weren't going to get the electric And check. I wasn't going to get done. Mm. So the stakes were high, the risks were low. You mean the stakes were high, the risk were low? <laughs> I think he's just trying to sound cool. The stakes weren't high. The stakes are what can happen to you and the risk. The stakes and the risk are the same. The risk is the stake, OK? Uh, yeah, unless you're nicking meat from a butcher's, then the, the stakes are high and the risk is low. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but what you meant was it the was game was high. The game the, was high. Yeah. yeah, the game was high. Yeah, the risk was low. Yeah. But no, it's not, wasn't it? wasn't, was it? Because 45p isn't a lot unless you're it a kid. It is when you're a kid. Most of the time, I didn't want to say which shop it was that I nicked it from, but it's where I did my paper round. Now, the thing is... So you're nicking from your own boss? Nah, but listen. I used to oh, wake him up. That I helped is him terrible. Run. No, because I. That is terrible. This is awful. That Go is, on. Hang on. I want to hear him. Really no, I want to hear him rationalise his. Because that terrible sweet crime. old man who used to give. He's not an old man. I used to go around and wake him up, there. right? He yeah. hated running that place. Right. Uh, if anything, I'd say I was his best asset. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Yeah. Because I you were nicking from him, you were yeah, nicking from him. I, I don't know, know how business. much he made on papers, but he'd probably go, 45 free profit, hold on. I, they got their papers really early, because I, I got up early. Yeah. I used to go round to the well, shop. Well, no, a day four. helps you work, rest and steal. So, so I used to go round there, wake him up. He'd be like, what are you doing round here so early? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just angry. What? I'm just, I'm just hungry for work. No. Oh, well, good, well, good boy. I'm just going to turn away a minute yeah, um, yeah. while you stand there in front of the confectionery. Um, mm. I'll turn away now, and I've looked back now, and it's the papers. And yeah. thanks so much, Carl, because you, you're a lovely He's kid. like an honourable and trustworthy guy. Yeah, I can't guy. really afford to... I've uh, been betrayed so many times. That's why yeah. my lovely wife's no longer with me, you know, as you ran off with Ken. Yeah, but, I mean, at least I've got a friend. At least I've got you, one young friend. You turn friend. up early, you're... Oh, God, it, it's brilliant. Oh, and Carl, keep a lookout, because... Um, Someone's been nicking Mars. Yeah, I know, I, know it's, I know it's not you, because I trust you implicitly. And, and, and by the way, Carl, why don't you take a Mars bar for free? Oh, thanks. Well, that never happened. <laughs> All right. So, I'm getting 50 pence a day for delivering papers. Mm. But I needed the energy. Right. Now, if I, if I spent my 50p on a Mars bar, yeah. 5p profit a day, it's not worth it. No. So, help yourself. I knew I was doing a good no, job no, no, for you. No, 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 sew up yourself. That doesn't, that, that doesn't follow. Sew up yourself. Get another job, leave that job, negotiate a pay rise, not out myself. That doesn't, that doesn't go, that's ridiculous. Where does it stop? If you worked in a nuclear power plant, well, they're not paying me much. Have a little bit of uranium. <laughs> a lovely little bit of uranium. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do. It's a, it's a strange analogy, Rick. It's <laughs> <laughs> left straight from a bloke nicking stuff from work. So he works in a power plant, he's having himself a bit of uranium. What's he doing with the well, uranium? You know, Mars a day and all that, and that's for energy, and so is uranium. <laughs> but more energy than a Mars bar. Yeah.